Now, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the One Call Stadium. It is the second leg of the first of the League Two playoff semi finals tonight as Mansfield Town hosts Newport County with the score 1 1 after the first leg in South Wales three nights ago. This place is alive with noise at the moment. The two sides making their way out onto the field of play. It's been a wonderfully sunny afternoon here as it has been for much of the country. A few clouds overhead now. Newport with just over a thousand fans away to our left hand side fair play to them for making the 160 mile journey up late on a Sunday afternoon Mansfield just about sold out the home areas as well there were just 150 tickets left earlier this afternoon but now there are barely any seats to be had around us here this one finally poised after a hotly contested opening game in South Wales on Thursday CJ Hamilton's opener cancelled out late on by Portra Gamond having missed a controversial penalty before knocking in the rebound. We could go all the way to extra time and penalties tonight to determine who will take their place at Wembley on May the 25th to play the Tranmere Rovers or Forest Green Rovers. And a reminder that away goals do not count double in the playoffs. Mansfield will last in the third tier in the 2002-03 season. Well, he had to go a lot further back into Newport's history, having been there in 1986-87, that before the club spiralled down and out of business. More recently, in 2013 these two sides came up together for what was the conference premier and six years on they're looking to jump one step further the home side are now four games without a win after that draw on Thursday and the Stags are looking to end Newport's fantastic unbeaten run which now stands at 11 games and I'm delighted to say that alongside me for this one is EFL expert and former South End and Seafley's midfielder Adrian Clark this one set up perfectly great atmosphere fantastic conditions the Newport fans here in their numbers it should be a great game Oh, we're set fair, aren't we? It's a gorgeous night for football, I've got to say. Here at the One Call Stadium, half the pitch bathed in sunshine, the rest in shade from this big main stand at the, at the ground. And, the, and yeah, the atmosphere is absolutely buzzing. The Newport fans, in the run-up to kick-off, away to our left, have been singing their hearts out, haven't they? But, but it's a sell-out, and I'm expecting a really close game between two excellent teams. We've got the direct, strong, aggressive cup specialists of Newport against the talented Mansfield side that really should have gone up automatically they're getting to, they don't want this second chance but this is the way they're going to have to go if they are to play League One football next season it's beautifully poised at one apiece should be a great game the pictures with the sponsors going on in the centre circle at the moment fans on three sides of the ground here at the one called stadium the stand opposite us where the tv cameras are situated has uh, long been condemned actually now just full of advertising boards but there is still a decent atmosphere here tonight just to run you through the two teams again very quickly logan in goal for mansfield right wing back jones pierce turner and sweeney the mid uh, the defensive three so hamilton the left wing back he's got lightning pakes mcdonald mellis and tomlinson in the midfield and Walker and Rose, the front two. Well, for Newport, they've got Day in goal, very impressive goalkeeper. Wilmot right wing back, Paul O'Brien, Dimitriou, the mid... Uh, sorry, again, the defensive three. Butler, the left wing back. Labadee, Sheehan and Bennett in the midfield. Amond and Matt, the forward two. Should mention the referee, Michael Salisbury. Hopefully he's up to standard tonight after what we had the other night with those controversial decisions which upset David Blickcroft, and rightly so... Of course, we don't have any VAR or anything like that at this level. Big pressure on Salisbury's shoulders here tonight. Mansfield in their home kit of yellow fading into blue. Newport in all white this evening. Final word of advice from Michael Flynn to his striker, Padre Gamond, who was called up to the Republic of Ireland squad in March. Highly rated by Mick McCarthy. Highly rated by plenty in South Wales as well. Here we go. The two sides out on the pitch, and we're off and underway. Mansfield kick us off. They're attacking the end where the Newport fans are in this first half. And it's a fast and frantic start to this game, as it was on Thursday night. And straight away, Jamil Matt trying to make a nuisance of himself on halfway. Newport trying to play the ball down the right-hand side, but Mansfield hoof it back high into the air. 
And a bit of head tennis going on in the early stages. Do you feel that Newport have that momentum at the moment? I do, yeah. I, I, I fancy them because they're a, they're a cup side. They've, they've proven themselves, haven't they, in, in the cup competitions against higher league opposition in the past. I'll just hold off. Chance for Mansfield down the left-hand side. Hamilton trying to put the centre over and they've won the first corner of the game. Yeah, and they've also got two strikers that have both scored 20-plus goals in all competitions this season. But it's Mansfield that have made the better start. They're on the front foot here, won an early corner, and they are very dangerous from these kind of situations. Three big defenders all come up for this one. And Newport showing them that respect. They pulled everyone back to defend this. It's a corner that will be taken as an in-swinger on the left-hand side. Uh, it may be taken short here, I think, to Jacob Mellis. But the movement in and around the penalty area is short to Mellis now. Edge of the penalty on the left-hand side. Wasn't a great return ball. Mellis still wide on the left. Holds it, right-footed, pokes it back down the line. The cross comes in high. Not a bad ball in there. And a good clearance away it was as well. Newport did have numbers back there. And they needed them there to get that ball out and away. Hoist it back forward again. Header clear and helped on now by Josh Sheehan into midfield. Mansfield have it inside their own half. It's played out to the right-hand side by Willem Tomlinson. Real pace to the game, isn't there? As you would expect. Good play, actually, down this left-hand side from Alex McDonald, who's a right-footed player. He whipped a really dangerous ball into the box. It was well defended by Newport, but at the moment, the ball is very much a hot potato, isn't it? So often the case in these big playoff games when you get two sides colliding. Interestingly, Newport starting with a four at the back. Yeah, it's just changed. I, I was surprised, actually, that they... They matched up Mansfield in the first leg because their success had been built on a 4-3-3, really, Newport County. They went a bit more negative, I think, in the, in the first match here. They go into the tried and trusted. Just over two minutes gone. It's Mansfield nil, Newport nil here on TalkSport 2. It's a throw-in wide on the left-hand side for Newport. You're listening to the coverage with McDonald's Fun Football, providing over five million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. And it looks like we're going to have a long throw here on the left-hand side to be taken by Mickey Dimitriou. Can he find a target in the middle? Logan trying to get involved. This one's hoisted in towards him. Not a great throw in the end, though, and it's well cleared away by CJ Hamilton, who was back there. Hamilton battling away for it on the left-hand side now. He nods it forward, but can't pick up the ball. Amon is back there to retain possession for Newport County. This game hasn't quite settled down yet. Both sides trying to get the ball forward quick. And a free kick here for Newport. Soft one. Mellis concedes it. And straight away, David Flickcroft in the ear of the fourth official, Peter Wright. Yeah, as a former winger myself, I'm really impressed with CJ Hamilton. He, he's a natural forward player. He, he can play up front. But he's being used at the moment in a, in a left wing-back role. And he was excellent in the first leg. And having played that role myself, it can make you... You could end up in some really uncomfortable positions having to defend, but he does a good job at it. He's a, he's a tigerish player, diligent. He's not afraid to do a bit of the dirty work too. Mansfield just missing out on promotion on the final day, losing at MK Dons in front of a massive crowd there. And it's a big crowd for them here again tonight. They've only averaged just over 4,000 for league games this season. But this one just about sold out to its capacity of around eight or 9,000. Push on the edge of the Mansfield penalty area here gives the home side a free kick. And the referee being questioned here by a few of the Mansfield players who I think thought that was a bit of a rugged challenge. Well, it was. Uh, it's Labadee, isn't it? Josh Labadee has come into the side. Journeyman player, really played for a number of clubs in and around this level in the past. He's just aggressive. There's nothing more than that. I don't think there's any need to make a fuss of it. You do sense, given those quotes, really strong quotes from. David Flickcroft after the first leg about the referee you do get that sense that they're going to try and apply a bit of pressure here on the official tonight which is uh, Michael Salisbury and they really like that but I guess you've got to do what you've got to do to get that little edge free kick then to be taken by Conrad Logan long one up towards the edge of the Newport area it's headed away by O'Brien into the air Oh, and then a tough challenge going in in midfield. Mansfield certainly not messing around here tonight. Trying to break out here is Matt for the away side. And the ball back to Logan isn't the greatest either. He just prevents the corner. Oh. As, uh, Matt closes him down there. Fast and frenetic stuff here at the One Call Stadium. Oh, I tell you what, it's a big collision, wasn't there? Tomlinson it was, who's come in for Mansfield. 
Hammond away down the right hand side for Newport play Paul into the middle slight push in there but Mansfield did just about enough to clear the ball away and they will try and counter now with Hamilton over the halfway line into the left channel plays it wide to Danny Rose back into the middle now for Mellis up towards the edge of the penalty Mellis then blocks off the referee was close by he says no free kick it is going to be a great 90 minutes of football. We've played just over five and a half minutes. Nil nil the score here on Talksport 2. The time just coming up to ten past six in the evening here. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful start to the game. It's fast and furious. It's, it's full blooded. I think that's the term best used to describe what we've seen so far. Not, no goal chances as such, but they will come. Lovely spread of play out to Hamilton on the left hand side, but even with his pace, he can't quite get there. And it's out of play for a Newport throw. Just, sorry, the referee just halting play here, having a word with a couple of Mansfield players. It's really in his ear, aren't they? Really in his ear, the players, particularly the Mansfield ones. He's having a word with Mellis here. It was a big collision, I think it was Will Tomlinson, in, on his counterpart, fellow number 16, Josh Sheen. I put the elbow was up. My instinct was that it was a really reckless challenge, but the referee let it go. Do you think those kind of comments that David Flickcroft had made can transmit through to a referee for a second leg? He's not going to have been able to avoid them, is he? No, uh, we're all human. And he will... He's put tonight's official under added pressure. Big challenge going in there, and Mansfield have won a free kick five yards outside the penalty area, and the yellow card is coming out here. Well, these two teams really not messing around and getting well stuck into each other. You just wonder if it's going to stay 11 v 11. Uh, the way it started, you'd be really surprised if it does end. 11 versus 11. That was a crunching tackle, wasn't it? And it's by Joss Labbert. He had a warning just a moment or two ago into the side. And he has made his presence felt, hasn't he? I think on that occasion he can have no complaints about the yellow. And this is a free kick that is just about in shooting range what is it probably about 27 yards out from goal Mellis is over and he is a good technician in midfield you might fancy this he may cross though it's one of those that falls betwixt and between yeah, he'd have to either flight it in very softly or put plenty of power behind it to go for goal just left of centre midway between the D and the corner of the penalty area in front of these vocal Newport fans who've made the long journey and uh, Mellis kind of standing over at the moment I don't think he might put plenty of power into this one. A four-man wall for Newport. Referee just about ready. He's all set for this one. Can Mellis deliver here for Mansfield Town? He steps up to the ball now. Mellis flies it towards goal, but too much height on it. Tried to curl it towards the top left-hand corner, but got right underneath it and sent it high into the away end. Yeah, disappointing effort in the end uh, from Jacob Mellis. He's a good player. I think he's one of Mansfield's best. A lot of the ball comes through him. He was excellent in the first leg. He's the most advanced of the three central midfielders. He'll look to join in with Rose and Walker. Where's the number eight shirt? But yeah, the free kick wasn't the best. He was, his technique was wrong. He just limped back at the moment of impact. It was always sailing over the crossbar. Scored in Mansfield's last win. A 4-0 win here against Morecambe back on the 19th of April on Good Friday. That's a League One experience behind him and it's a former youth international with England on the books of Chelsea and Southampton. Now applying his trade in League Two. Mansfield have a throw on the right-hand side here, but they've given the ball away. Onto it quickly is Labadee. He goes over, and the referee has given a free kick here to Newport, and Mansfield again protesting their innocence. And wide on the left-hand side here, around 10, 15 yards inside the Mansfield half. Still nil-nil. Well, these are the positions that Newport want. I think if I'm in Flickcroft's shoes, I'm telling my players ahead of kick-off, do not give too many fouls away inside their own half, because they're excellent at their ball situations, and they've got plenty of weapons not, not just one play they can aim for here Mansfield with a high line just outside the D high ball into the penalty not back across goal a chance for Hammond at the far post nearly there it goes over and out of play for a goal kick but that was well worked by Newport that's fantastic it was Mark O'Brien who gets on so many of Newport's corners and free kicks he's got a great leap he's the captain he just peeled off to the far stick and I think he did the right thing there rather than go for goal he's nodded it across the six yard box he needed someone to follow in and it was just away from Hammond in the end it was a yard or so away from his outstretched leg and it's out for a goal kick but that's a warning I think for Mansfield they can't afford to be reckless inside their own half the way that Newport have set up here they're playing with Paul at right back then O'Brien Dimitri the defensive two with Butler at left back slightly different to the shape they had 
down at Rodney Parade on Thursday. They were nearly ahead by this point, Mansfield Town, when Hamilton struck. Racing away down the left, he hasn't had too many opportunities to stretch his legs so far. No, and I think part of that change might be to do with CJ Hamilton, because Regan Paul is, is an excellent young player. He's on loan from Manchester United, he's only 20. I think they want to match him up with Hamilton. A chance for Hamilton to run down the left-hand side here, taking no chances. Mark O'Brien, who puts it out of play, it's a throw-in to Mansfield Town on the left-hand side, right by the corner flag. Hamilton assessing his options here. Looks like he's winding up for the long one. In it comes now, loops it in high towards the edge of the six-yard box, and Newport able to clear. Comes back out as far as Sweeney. Back down the line to CJ Hamilton. Curls the ball in towards the near post, and the goalkeeper, while taking a risk there, waited the, for the ball to come to him instead of rushing to his near post to go and grab it. And he holds on to it. Yeah, no, it was one of those awkward ones. The cross was deflected, and it's spinning ball, not easy. It's sun a little bit in his eyes as well, Joe Day. But Joe Day is, is one of Newport's key men in goal for the Exiles. He's, he's an excellent custodian at this level. I know a number of clubs are interested in him for next season. Newport with a speculative from range, and Logan force into his first save of the evening. It was Josh Sheehan who got the strike away. He's only scored once this season, but nearly came close to a spectacular second. Decent effort, wasn't it, from Josh Sheehan? It was a skimmer off the turf. It just bounced up in front of Conrad Logan. Took no chance. Didn't try and hold the ball. Pushes it behind for a corner, but good strike from distance, that. Still very sunny here in Nottinghamshire. Just north of Nottingham itself here in Mansfield. Newport taking this corner short into the box. It goes header towards goal. There were bodies flung all over the place inside the box. It's gone out of play for a corner on the right-hand side this time. Mansfield again not happy with the decision. They've just got to get on with things here. They seem to be protesting and complaining about every call the referee's making. I agree. Yeah, they're preoccupied. It's almost as if there's a real focus on getting into the ear of the referee. They've got to concentrate on defending, first and foremost, these set pieces. It's, you know, they seem distracted to me. Corner for Newport on the right. We're taken here by Robbie Wilmot, who... Uh, score the winning goal when these two sides met in the league back in February and it comes now towards the far post still bouncing around the ball Mansfield able to get it away in the end look back forward again and a tough header out there by Ben Turner bit of head tennis going on Mansfield eventually get the ball away headed back by Sheehan in the middle of the park here hook forward now over his own head by O'Brien towards the edge of the penalty area Matt Mansfield again get the ball away and uh, eventually it can be brought down and play will be played on the grass it's a lush green surface here the groundsman's done a great job to keep it in this condition it is a terrific pitch most pitches are these days but this is one of the best I think in the lower leagues it has to be it's absolutely fantastic no excuses whatsoever for the players tonight throw in for the exiles down the right hand side it'll be taken by Mickey Dimitriou He's got a long throw as well, just about everyone has these days. <laughs> <Seemingly>. <laughs> Saw Dwight Gale with a long throw at uh, Villa Park yesterday. Yeah, that one's a new one on me. Here comes the throw. Wide on the right-hand side, midway inside the Mansfield half, launched into their penalty area. Good big header away. Comes out as far as Paul. Midway inside the Mansfield half, lifts it back in again. High one towards Dimitri on the right-hand side. He nods it into the penalty area. Mansfield can't get out at the moment. Lifted back in by Sheehan. Weak effort by him this time. And the Stags able to clear it away as far as Mellis, up towards the halfway line. He's got Wilmot at his back. Lays it back one, and Mansfield try and work their way down the touchline now. High ball over the top, he's not a bad one at all, on towards Rose, and he just couldn't quite take it down. It just through towards Day, the goalkeeper who holds on. Yeah, he doesn't get on the end of that, but that's the type of ball Mansfield are looking to play in behind the Newport defence this evening. They've got pace aplenty, haven't they, with Rose, but particularly Tyler Walker been very quiet so far the Mansfield front men 14 and a half minutes gone it's Mansfield nil Newport nil here on TalkSport 2 coverage of this League 2 playoff semi-final second leg here and the applause you can hear is because it's been well shepherded out of play on the right hand side by Jones for a goal kick to Mansfield and you'd imagine Newport will be happy with the two sides so far I think so yeah they've started well they're using their aggression their physicality very very nicely and I just feel that going back to 4-3-3 which has been their, their stock system they've been flexible but 4-3-3 is their, their most used system everyone feels and looks a bit more comfortable within that Ammon's coming in off the right and, and I think that 
that's given them an unpredictable look but it, it is their aggression they're pinning Mansfield back at the moment making it a fairly scrappy affair picked up in midfield here by Mansfield and Alex McDonald played for by Christian Pierce, the captain and, and what, when, you come up against, throw, yeah, when you come up against a side that, that, that probably a better football inside than you that, that's got a lot of pace up front what do you do you, you, you can drop deep and then soak up pressure no, that, that's fair enough at times they might do that but the other way is to get in their faces and really hassle the home players tonight and, and force them into mistakes so that the quality that goes into the front men the most dangerous players particularly Tyler Walker 22 goals got to make sure the quality into him is poor and at the moment you've got to say Newport are successful in that ploy the ball hooked away by Christian Pierce down the right hand side they have it now with Gethin Jones and uh, taken on here it's played away in the end by Newport who've looked reasonably steady at the back so far and Dan Butler plays it away on the turn He's been the club player of the year in the last two seasons. It's a throw in on the left hand side here for Newport County. Yeah, very narrow back four. You see that left back's taking the, the throw in. The three defenders within 20 yards are keeping their shape nice. It does mean that Hamilton is in acres on this near touchline if Mansfield can play the early switch, of course. Ball in the arms at the moment of. Joe Day as Adrian was saying has been the undisputed number one for a number of years now since joining from Peterborough back in 2014 he was in the PFA's team of the year Pierce with a header back here to the goalkeeper Logan I'm not sure he knew what was around him there because two Newport players closing him down long ball forward from Logan goes straight through to his opposite number Day throws it out over arm towards Butler the left back who carries it forward up towards the halfway line for Newport County in their first ever EFL playoff campaign they became the 101st club to take part in them on Thursday night Horace Green becoming the 102nd a day later and they've acquitted themselves well so far Newport the ball tossed into the penalty here towards Ammon Mansfield able to play it away but they've been closed down very very quickly here it's an aggressive game from both sides. It's been a good watch so far. 0-0 nil -nil with nearly 18 minutes gone. It's the Newport fans making all the noise. I'm not hear. surprised. I'm really not. I think I've been really impressed with Michael Flynn's side. They're getting in the faces of the Mansfield players, aren't they? Not giving them any time to look up and play quality passes forward. They're, they're forcing errors. And it's it's been effective. This is definitely part of the strategy for them tonight. Paul with a throw down the line here for Newport. Matt trying to make a nuisance of himself, but can't get anything on the ball. It's hooked away in the end by CJ Hamilton. He's really not had too much of a kick in the game so far. He'll show for the ball here, but in the end it's played back by Tomlinson. And there's clear shirt ball going on here. And Marco Prime, the defender, and he's going to pick up a yellow card now. And the second Newport player to do so and left the referee with no option there really well, I think it's quite a harsh yellow it's a foul definitely it's good play from Tyler Walker who's barely had a kick in this match so far Tyler Walker but we know all about his threat it's great centre forward play body in holds it turns his man draws the foul that's, that's excellent from him uh, but it's a, it's a cheap yellow card and O'Brien walking that tightrope now both here and Labadee on bookings 19 minutes gone here at the One Call Stadium. 0 0 between Mansfield and Newport. Not a great free kick lifted in, but Mansfield try and make something of it. Hooks on towards goal in the end by uh, Sweeney, but over the crossbar and behind. Yeah, disappointing, really, from Mellis. He's better than that. It was a, a really flat free kick. All the big men had come forward for it, and it was behind everybody. In the end, Sweeney just sort of had to volley it towards goal. It was, it was always going to go over the crossbar. But yeah, just finally we get this lull with a goal kick it feels like it's been a, ever so, such a breathless start to this game has been a great game so far high ball forward here by Day up towards Matt the one uh, sorry the ball won by Pierce who is a Barbados international it's not bad swapping Barbados for Mansfield every few months <laughs> is it <laughs> yeah that's, what a result that is that, when, yeah. when that call oh, oh no through, oh no been, I've got uh, to go on international duty <laughs> really sorry about that <laughs> Yeah, yeah plays. He's had a good season as well. Yeah. Really has for Mansfield. Mansfield though, with just that one win in the last six games against Morecambe. 
draws against Northampton and Newport last time out defeats away at Oldham and MK Dons with a loss here against Stevenage as well yeah, you get some players don't you that always seem to be injured when it comes to the international weeks I bet he isn't <laughs> he's on the first plane out of East Midlands Airport <laughs> I can tell you Right on the left-hand side here is CJ Hamilton for Mansfield. Midway inside the Newport half. It's back on the halfway line here with Ryan Sweeney. He plays it forward, laid off by Rose, but it's not a great ball there to try and find a teammate. And Newport cleared away, but it goes through to Logan at the other end, who uh, is a big goalkeeper, isn't he? Stocky. Plenty of weight. I didn't want to do him a disservice there. I mean, he's yeah. put in a great performance on Thursday night for his side. He can he's saying he's still a unit, get around. He? Yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it, it, he's a good keeper. He's good with his hands. Very athletic. We saw that in the first leg. But yeah, he's, he's a bit portly of build. A little bit of uh, trouble maybe in the away end here. Plenty of police lining the front of the stand and one or two moving in to have a couple of words with the supporters here who've come here in their numbers and have done their club proud so far, making plenty of noise here. Mansfield though coming forward down the right hand side they're having plenty of the territorial advantage at the moment but the high ball forward goes straight through to Day over the head of Rose who hasn't really been chipping in with the goals he uh, hasn't scored his last 26 appearances actually yeah, it's a real surprise that isn't it it's Walker who's been getting the uh, strikes in along with Hamilton and after that it's Grant and Pierce and Rose who've got four apiece yeah, they've got a bit of firepower on the bench, haven't they? George Grant has, has scored goals at this level, plenty of them. Cross in here from the left-hand side from Butler into the middle, oh, it's off the bar! What a chance there for Newport. So, so close. They've rattled the frame with the goal. And it goes out of play, goal kick given in the end, but that's as close as we've come to a goal so oh, far. Oh, wow, what a ball in it is. And it's Sheehan, unmarked, he goes into the 18-yard box. I think it hits the post at the back of the goal. Ah. I think it looked to me as if it hit the post initially. But the fact that it's been given as a goal kick, I think it's hit the back post, the stanchion, so to speak. But it was a really clean volley, wasn't it, from Sheehan? A lovely ball in from the left as well. And Conrad Logan with the resulting goal kick away into the Newport half. Everyone just seemed in disbelief at what had happened there. Everyone just kind of stopped around us and was just staring at the goal. It's a throw in to Mansfield on the left hand side. The sun slowly setting behind the stand we're in now. Hamilton takes the throw into Mellis. Hamilton can't find the space on the left hand side at the moment to do any damage. Long ball away, comfortably headed down by Ben Turner, a former Premier League defender with Cardiff City. Ball is in the arms of Joe Day at the moment. We're over halfway through this first half here on Talksport 2. Talksport, your home of the playoffs. Day with a high ball into the air. Out towards the left hand side, towards Matt. Pierce trying to get the ball off him, but it breaks for Matt edge of the area. Jimmy on Matt starts it down the right hand side. Real chance here. Oh, and it's been put wide by Portrigamon. And Conrad Logan showed him so much of the goal there. He just had to roll it into the near post, but he's put it into the side, netting him behind. Bad miss. The near post is winking at Podrick Armand there. It really is. It's brilliant centre forward play from Jamil Matt. He slips him in. One versus one. And Logan has given too much space to that near post. He just has to pass it past him. And he gets flustered in the heat of the moment and he rolls it into the side netting. That's a bad miss. That, a real let off there for Mansfield Town two number 16's clashing in midfield Tomlinson and Sheehan ball out of play on this near side it's a throw in to Newport that's the threat that the top two for Newport post Jamil Matt the big unit holds the ball he's a nuisance and then you've got the runs the clever waspish movement of Ammond who is a good finisher didn't show it there but he is that's and a so much of that goal to aim at though didn't he the goalkeeper had showed him so much of that room at the near post normally you show him the far post if anything but Conrad Logan's got his angles slightly wrong there I thought it was a certain goal I really did and the sarcastic cheers of people around us because they know they know the home fans at Newport should have taken the lead there high ball forward by Butler cleared away at the back by Pierce. Mansfield not taking charge of the game in midfield and they've conceded a free kick here not quite within shooting range in the middle of their own half here Newport are going to have to try and work an angle on this I think 
referee Michael Salisbury bringing play to a halt here, although he's pulling Newport back a few yards here, which may actually do them a favour in the end. Mm. Yeah, their, their aggression is giving them superiority. Newport County, they are swarming all over Mansfield at the moment. It's one of those situations where you feel like the home side are, are hanging on a bit. 25 and a half minutes gone here at the One Call Stadium. Not going to shoot from here, is well, it? This is a long, long way out. This will be some strike. And it is driven towards goal. Deflection off the wall into the arms of Logan in the end. That would have been some hit there from range, I think, by uh, Sheehan. Yeah, he's, he's everywhere, isn't he? Sheehan. I mean, he's the guy that uh, had the volley just past the post. He's, he's broken into the box as often as possible. He's the one that forced a save out of Conrad Logan with the, the drive from long distance. So he's, he's a goal threat, isn't he, Josh Sheehan? One other play here of Tomlinson, who came into the side tonight for the injured Neil Bishop. Do you think this would be a kind of game that Bishop would be good in with the older legs? I mean, quite possibly. He's 37, isn't he, um, Bishop? I just wonder... 37 years of age could he could he have handled you know two games in such um, you know, just a matter of days apart maybe that's partly the reason he's not involved tonight is that he's down as a calf injury but yeah maybe they'll miss his wise head could have had tennis going on in the end it goes out of Alex McDonald for a Newport throw he uh, got a goal here in a 5-0 win for Mansfield when the sides met in mid-February last season Mansfield also winning the reverse game between the two sides here at home. 3-0 this season. A couple of goals from Otis Khan, along with strike from Tyler Walker. Mansfield bring the ball away here down the right-hand side. You can hear the passionate fans around us here at the One Core Stadium. You can see the, one of the main roads passing through the town behind the stand on the other side here. And there isn't a car to be seen. Just about everyone in the town watching this game in some respect at the moment. Ghost town, isn't it? This is the place to be tonight, the One Call Stadium. I'm sure plenty are listening in as well. Mansfield in possession here with Turner, who plays a high ball away to the left-hand side towards Hamilton, but it's headed away well by Paul. Hammond drifting out onto this right-hand side, picks the ball up, but it goes out off the Irishman in the end. It's a throw-in to the stacks both of these sides one win away from Wembley and a reminder that as things stand this one will be going to extra time tonight could be in for a long evening I hope you're not going back to a Sunday <laughs> dinner <laughs> no I had a big lunch yeah I've, I've prepped I, I have a feeling this might might be a late one there's not much between the two sides but look based on what we've seen so far Newport are the stronger outfit this evening Walker down the right hand side for Mansfield checks goes back one Mansfield working across midfield to the left-hand side and Sweeney steps forward with the ball on his left foot. Jinx pass one. Makes space to play the ball down the left-hand side but Hamilton had a man with him. Mellis tips the high ball forward but that'll go through today. You see, that is exactly the tactic. Get in the faces, hassle those yellow and blue shirts, force them to go long and because of the pressure, the quality of the balls forward towards Walker and Rose have been really wayward. So how many times has a forward pass run through to Joe Day already? I think Michael Flynn will be thrilled with the application of his players. Nearly half an hour gone. Mansfield nil, Newport nil. 1-1 one, one on aggregate. After the first leg a few days ago. Tranmere or Forest Green Rovers, the opponents in the final at Wembley. The first to take place a week on Saturday. High ball forward here for Newport, but this one carries through to Conrad Logan. Tranmere with the advantage against Forest Green, having won that first leg by a goal to nil. Their second leg tomorrow, 7.45 start at the new lawn. Yeah. Sam Park, and I think some code comes for that one with Jim. Jim Proud for... What a goal that was, by the way. For some Tranmere. striking off the bar, wasn't oh, it? <laughs> Absolute beauty. And they had goal line technology installed, didn't they, ahead of that fix of Tranmere, which I thought was really interesting. Boy, did it pay off for them. Play forward here by McDonald in midfield to, for Mansfield. Lovely ball out to the right-hand side, taken down by Geppin Jones. Forward to Walker, who tries to return it to him down the right, but it's seized upon now, and Mellis gets to the ball. He was taken down. I think a few of the Mansfield players looking around, asking whether another yellow card can be shown there, but the referee's not going to oblige this time. Free kick to Mansfield, 20 yards inside the Newport half, just right of centre. Yeah, it was Josh Sheehan. That man, he's everywhere at the moment. Definite foul. Mickey Dimitri flew 
into a 50-50 with Tyler Walker initially. Great timing on the challenge. A bit so aggressive with the danger man. But yeah, this is a, a good opportunity. We've seen a lot of free kicks from this kind of range already so far, haven't we? It's one of those where they're going to clip this towards the far post. And the point signs, Alex McDonald lifts his one arm into the air, curls it into the box now towards the far post, and Turner, who tries to go for the header and then, I think, slips and almost does the worm on the playing surface in front of us there and flies to the floor. Looks to the referee, asking for a decision, but goal kick gets the worm. <laughs> you got that in your locker? What's the worm? Did you, what did you say? Yeah, he kind of like jumped up and then fell flat on his on his stomach <laughs> on the on the on the pitch. <laughs> I don't know if I know. The, what, what is the worm? The worm, the, the wrestling move. No, I, no, I don't know anything oh, about on. wrestling. Come on, talk to me about real sport. <laughs> Wrestling, come on. Do you remember Rikishi and Grandmaster Sexy and Scotty Too Hotty? Oh, come I, on, where have you been? This means nothing to me, oh, I'm dear. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. I haven't I'm going to show you a video at half time and then you, clue. Can, you can give your assessment in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> Free kick here to Newport, wide on the left hand side. It's a fairly warm evening here. Not too many people needing the coats. It's certainly been heated out on the pitch as well. Crossing opportunity here for Newport on the left-hand side. I think Wilmot's going to take this one, swings it in. Good delivery as well. Conrad Logan comes, gets hands to it. And Hamilton will play the ball away. No one for though, in a Mansfield shirt. Wicked delivery in. Oh, terrific, wasn't it, from Wilmot. And that was good goalkeeping, really assertive from Conrad Logan. Bodies around him, he comes and punches the ball, gets good distance on it. Promoted from the National League in the past, knows what it's like to get a side out of a division. He picked the ball up again on the left-hand side here, rolls it back one to Butler just over the halfway line. Back to Wilmot on the left wing. He delivers again, not the greatest ball in this time. And uh, Mansfield will bring it away. They'll try and counter now, but they haven't got too many bodies forward. And in the end, actually, McDonald has overrun it. Newport will come forward themselves. Ammon down the right-hand side. He's dropped deep quite a lot, hasn't he, down this right channel? Yeah, he's grafting. They're playing some good football as well, Newport, on occasion. I think Josh Sheen, who's been outstanding, is, is uh, at the hub of everything they do inside the middle of the pitch. There again, picking up the second ball. All the loose balls seem to be going to white shirts at the moment, not those in yellow and blue. The ball forward here to Walker, backing in, holds up the ball and lays it out to the left-hand side for CJ Hamilton. A chance for him to come forward, but again, not much space for him to operate in, so goes inside instead and finds Tomlinson. Signed from Blackburn on a free transfer at the end of the January transfer window. He's had limited opportunities in the last couple of games, but comes in to replace Bishop here from the start tonight. Sweeney on the left-hand side for Mansfield. Plays it forward into McDonald. Back to Sweeney. Tries to go past two players, then gets blocked off and fouls his man. And Labadee goes over. Free kick to Newport. And you can just sense around us that the fans are getting frustrated. They know that Newport are just doing that bit extra to, to win the game. And look them all likely to get the opening goal. Yeah, that vibe is obvious around us. Yeah, real frustration. I mean, it's a, it's a, OK, they're, they're not playing particularly well, Mansfield. Newport are the better side, but the tie's level. They're not behind. I think they should get behind their boys, but you do sense a little bit of restlessness around us. They're not happy with what they're seeing, the locals. Michael Flynn standing on the edge of his technical air at the moment, just behind Paul, who takes his free kick long, direct towards the edge of the on by Matt, and the strike coming in from Wilmot was well blocked there by oh, a couple of defenders threw themselves at it. Turner was one of them, out of play for a throw into the away side on the left wing. Oh, it's a sensational block from Ben Turner. He caught that sweetly, did Robbie Wilmot on the volley he gets in surprise surprise of a flick on from Jamil Matt who's so hard to deal with particularly in the air here comes another of those missile long throw from the left Dimitri with the ball in his arms long one into the box towards the edge of the six yard area but well headed away by Turner again there's one thing you can always guarantee with him he'll throw his head and body towards the ball high ball in for Newport from the left but over hit and Hamilton picks it up by his own corner flag and settles for the throw in in front of a stand which has the title the oldest professional football ground in the world you used to play here once upon a time yeah I played here before I had no idea that it was the oldest football ground in the world I mean that's that's quite an accolade isn't it well three relatively uh, modern stands around us here the one on the far side doesn't have anyone in it anymore Newport coming forward here with Ammon, Matt inside the penalty area on the right hand side, couldn't quite get the ball out of his feet, and uh, in the end nearly trips his man, the referee gives the free kick belatedly, 
think uh, them saying it's the oldest professional football ground in the world is like that episode of Only Pools and Horses where Trigger says this broom is the oldest broom in circulation but it's had something like six new handles and nine <laughs> new brushes or something Quite like that. Quite possibly, yeah. yeah. Maybe the pitch itself or the, you know... The, <laughs> in the well, same the, location. The plot, the yeah. plot has obviously been here a long, long time. Um, but it's, a, it's an impressive main stand. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the modern one, but it's uh, very high. It's the kind of stand you'd maybe expect to see in the championship. The rest of the, the ground is, is, is more associated, I guess, with League Two. But no, this, the, this club's ready for League One football for sure. And Newport County, I remember playing against them not that long ago in, in non-league football. So their journey has been a good one. Yeah, Mansfield finishing eighth last season, missed out on the playoffs by a place and three points. Missing out on automatic promotion this time around. And that shootout against MK Dons on the final day of the season. Throw in here for CJ Hamilton towards the edge of the penalty area, but a free kick has been given away by the forward in there, Danny Rose. It wasn't long ago, was it, that Newport saved themselves on the final day of the season from, from being relegated out of League Two, so... Yeah, 2016-17, so they it, yeah. finished 22nd, as they did the season before that. They uh, did well initially, having been promoted from the <laughs> non-league pyramid. And now find themselves on the verge of a return to the third tier. Yeah, it'll be some achievement, because... Michael Flynn, we know he's got a great re reputation as, a, as a, an emerging young coach, but in terms of the budget, it's not a big one. It really isn't. You're listening to Mansfield against Newport on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football, providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. We have played 37 minutes here at the One Core Stadium, and it is still goalless, but it's been a good watch yeah. for a nil-nil. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's been full-blooded. Um, not loads of clear-cut chances, but plenty of application. This is better, though, for Mansfield. Hamilton now on the left wing, in the sunshine. Comes in field onto his right foot, tries to lift the ball into the penalty area, and it has his effort blocked, and then a bit of a follow-through from him on Josh Laverty. Free kick given to Newport. Great play, great cover from the central midfielder there, Laverty. He saw the threat of Hamilton. It was one big switch of play. They need to do that so much more. Mansfield Town, they switch it to Hamilton, but he's forced inside by Regan Paul, who's having a good game at right back, the on loan Manchester United player. And he drives him inside, and then the central midfielder Lampley comes across, makes the block, gets fouled, and everything, the sting is taken out of that attack. So, good play all round. Newport, we know, have done so well in the in the Cups in recent times. You know, last season they beat Leeds and held Spurs, and this year went all the way to the quarterfinals, dumping out Leicester and Middlesbrough before losing 4-1 at home to Premier League champions now, Manchester City. How can a side be like that? <laughs> Just a handful. They've, they've got weapons and a lot of spirit and togetherness. And, yeah, they, they've got players that can handle these big occasions. So... They're well set, aren't they, for the playoffs? I mean, if they were to get through this tie and get to Wembley, it'd be hard to back against them. Long throw from the left here from Dimitri, in line with the edge of the penalty, in towards Logan again, who gets hands to it, nodded back towards goal this time, on to the bar this time! Can they force it in Newport? No, they can't. Logan's got on the ground, trying to get his body onto the ball, and in the end, the ball has thankfully rolled into his arms, another let off for Mansfield Town, off the bar this time. I think it's Scott Bennett that just nods the ball onto the crossbar. It's a loopy effort. It's close range. It just gets something on it. It was Logan that, that scrambled the ball away. I think it was with a punch, but it wasn't cleared properly. And God, it was so scrappy, but Newport County very, very nearly made the breakthrough there. It's the closest we've come. To throw in here to Newport in line with the edge of their own penalty area. And you'd imagine we've got what, just over, under six minutes to go until half time. Michael Flynn will be just going into his players at the base saying, like, that's more of the same. We're going to get that goal. We're creating chances. We're finding space. And from the long throws, we've got an option. We've got an option from set plays as well. Nothing wrong at all with Newport's game plan. The only thing missing from this Newport County performance is a goal. As for Mansfield, haven't got going, haven't played any of the free flowing football that, that they have produced this season. The midfield has been overpowered. At the back, they're, they're struggling to contain Matt. And up front, the service into Walker and Rose is, is very poor. So plenty for Flickcroft and his boys to work on. Poor header from Pierce into the air. And as it dropped straight in front of him, Matt got his body between his uh, 
Well, it's the Mansfield players and the ball and just invited the challenge and went straight through the back of him and Mansfield give away a free kick here on 40 yards from goal, central position. Yeah, well, we've been here before. Sheen had a crack, didn't he, from this range last time. It's got to be 35, 40 yards, 35, I'd imagine. Well, there's around six players standing over the ball at the moment. <laughs> yeah, they, they all fancy a crack. They do. I, personally, I think this is, this is a bit ambitious. I'd be looking to maybe change the angle here and... And get the ball into the box, maybe for Matt or O'Brien. Doesn't look like O'Brien's going to go up for this, actually. Especially when you've got Wilmot, who can bend a ball from a wide area. They've touched it short in the end. It's been struck from distance, but easily blocked away by Mansfield. And we have it at the back now with Pierce, who plays a high one towards halfway. Up towards Rose, who goes down under a challenge. And the referee going to his pocket again. And what colour is this card going to be coming out here? Chance of off from the home fans. I think the referee is only going to show a yellow. But Newport, as good as they've played, have picked up a few yellow cards now, which uh, isn't going to do themselves any good into the second half. It's, you know, it's a slight concern for them. It's Dan Butler, the left back. It was a coming together. It was aggressive. It's obviously it's, it's the furthest distance possible away from us. We've got a great view here, haven't we? Just to the right of the halfway line. It's dead opposite us. But, and it looked like one of those that could have been a stray arm, could have been an elbow. It might just have been a collision between two players. And uh, But no major complaints from Butler. And Butler has been sent off once this season already against Forest Green back in December. Stays on the pitch here. The referee talking to the Mansfield captain, Christian Pearce, at the moment. Probably about the rationale behind that decision. We've got just over three minutes of normal time to go in the first half. Nil-nil the score in this playoff semi-final second leg here at the One Call Stadium in Mansfield. Mansfield setting up here for a long ball forward from this free kick. Out on the right-hand side. It's going to be taken long, but the referee telling one of the players he's got to go off here. What's going on? Is he telling Hamilton he's got to go off? No, it's not Hamilton. It's Rose who's going to have to go off. It's Rose who, who was clattered, I think. And because he... Did he have treatment? Well, I, don't think he, I don't think he did, but he obviously went off the pitch on the far side, so I think the referee's telling him he's got to come off on this near side before being told he can go back on again. Shakes the hand of Michael Flint. A bit daft, isn't it? Long ball forward here for Mansfield. High one towards Turner, who's... Gets a bit of a push in the back, and the referee blows the whistle in the end. It's an offside call. Well, a bit of a bizarre sequence of uh, <laughs> plays there. In the end, it's a free kick to Newport County, deep in their own half, yeah. and it remains nil-nil. Yeah, the individual battles are really interesting, aren't they? I, I think when you get to a two-legged tie like this, with just a few days in between, those little little duels, they, they fester, and, and, and little niggles play on players' minds. It'll be this time he kicked me, I'm going to get him back in the next game. just feels to me as if it's very niggly and that there are words being shared between the two sets of players. But in terms of what we've seen on the pitch, Newport County have been by far the more accomplished side here this evening, but they haven't got the reward of a goal. Well, after Newport lost to Northampton on March the 12th, they were 13th, eight points off the playoffs, and uh, went on that 10-match unbeaten run to seal their place. Their longest unbeaten run since they've been in the league back in 2013, which just shows how good they've been playing in recent weeks. It's all about timing, isn't it? Yeah, I looked at the form table, last 10 games of the regular season, they're top, the best team in the division, the final 10 games of the season. Mansfield, 16th. So these two sides, and, and based on what we've seen so far, it kind of looks that way. Throw in here to Newport on the left-hand side. And they're winding up, or setting up rather, for the long one again here. Demetrio launches it into the box. It nearly falls in there for Scott Bennett. Mansfield clear it away. And then give away a free kick in a silly area. Stupidly conceded there by Jacob Mellis because, you know, Josh Labadee was going nowhere to try to retrieve the ball on this near right-hand side. He was running towards the two technical areas and he just went through the back of him. Yeah, it was dark. It was silly. It really was. Mellis knew straight away, put his head in his hands. Oh, what have I done? And now we've got Dan Butler, left foot over this. It's a lovely angle on this. These are the kind of free kicks I used to take as a, as a left footer. What you're looking to do, ideally, is bend it towards that far post. And look, if it goes straight in, great. 
but preferably someone will get a little nick on this. That'll be the the aim for Butler here. 15 yards outside the penalty area, right outside Butler curls it towards the far post, and the header just over the bar. That was a fraction away from 1 0 from Portugal Gammon. Oh, it's a bullet header. It really is, but it's over the crossbar. The ball in is a peach from Dan Butler. It's got pace. It is aimed for that far post. Hammond attacks it. Free header, six yards out. He'd be gutted he hasn't hit the target there, but it was coming at him at quite a pace. Well, it's Newport who've had all the chance in this first half. We are into a minimum of two minutes of additional time at the end of this first half, and plenty of fans heading downstairs to get some early refreshment on board. It has been a great watch, hasn't it, between these two sides for us. Hopefully you're enjoying it wherever you are this evening. Turner with a clearance away here from Mansfield. High into the sky, which is still blue. And the referee has blown here for another offside. Newport with the free kick. Midway inside their own half here, and Joe Day is going to take it. Yeah, Mansfield fans not happy at all, are they, with what they've seen from their team. When I watched the first leg, I thought Mansfield were excellent. Particularly the first half. They were outstanding. They came out of the blocks flying. They looked superior to Newport. But Newport got stronger that first leg went on. But in this match, I mean, it's they've, they've delivered next to nothing really as an attacking force. We're sitting here on the, on the press bench. We've got the written colleagues alongside us here. And someone who's sitting next to me doing a, a match report here has got two columns. One for Mansfield and one for Newport. And there is nothing in the Mansfield column whatsoever. <laughs> in terms of what they've got in this first half or attempts they've had or anything Newport with a cross in here from the left in towards the middle oh and the ball bouncing off the bar again there this time off a defensive head I think it was Turner who tried to clear the ball away and the Mansfield players looking around each other saying come on we can't let this slip away it's a Newport corner on the right hand side we played a minute and 45 of added time this is the last chance of the first half Mansfield are clinging on here that's the second time Newport have hit the woodwork this time it's off the head of Mansfield defender Ben Turner another wonderful delivery into the box what can they produce from this corner Newport Butler takes it from the right in towards the near post headed on by Amund out of play on the other side goal kick given and that is the half time whistle and a few boos around us here from the home fans who aren't quite convinced by what they're seeing but the ones by the tunnel applauding the side off here as they go into the half time interval the Newport fans making plenty of noise away to our left hand side they know their side are in the ascendancy here and as things stand it's just a matter of time before they get the opening goal the half-time score here, though, at the One Call Stadium in this playoff semi-final second leg. Mansfield Town nil, Newport County nil. Thanks very much, Nat. Newport boss Michael Flynn was in the side that beat Grimsby in the semi-finals before beating Wrexham 2-0 at Wembley when Newport were promoted from the conference in 2013. This time trying to mastermind the promotion up to League One. The two sides back out on the field of play. And uh, coming on here for Mansfield is going to be... Malvin Benning, and he has replaced Willem Tomlinson, so his return to the side didn't last too long. Just trying to see if that might mean a change in shape for them. Looks like Benning has gone over to the left-hand side, as you'd expect. Uh, looks like it may be the same shape, and any understanding why that change would be for Well, him? he's not happy, is he? Um, it, it didn't really happen for Will Tomlinson inside the middle of the park. So no, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all that he's made a change. It's still, it's still a back three or a back five, depending on which way you look at it. But I think he had to do something. He had to to change things up, Flickcroft. So we are underway in this second half. Mansfield in possession. Both teams kicking towards the ends where their fans are in this second period. It would be some way to end the week for Newport County if they could get themselves to Wembley. And that long journey back into South Wales tonight would be so much more sweeter high ball towards halfway here Butler with a header down for Newport but it breaks in midfield for Jacob Mellis I think David Flickcroft will have got right stuck into them at half time and ask do you really want this or not definitely yeah no doubt about it it have had words with the players it's definitely a change of formation Hamilton has been pushed into a more advanced role it's more more it's three up front now for Mansfield Mansfield edge of the penalty area here with Walker left hand side gets in the strike over the bar but that's better from them already yeah no, that one piece of play there Tyler Walker turning running across the face of goal and then scooping his shot over the bar that's more than they manage really in the entirety of the first period yeah it's definitely it's more of a 3-4-3 three, three for 
Mansfield at the moment. Walker's come out to this right-hand side. It's Rose down the middle with CJ Hamilton effectively playing as a left winger. I do think that that's a position that suits him better. I think that the, the reason behind that is that he was, he was ineffectual, wasn't he, CJ Hamilton? Couldn't use his pace. He was too deep. He was pushed back in that first half. Now he'll be loitering inside Newport territory, and that's not what Regan Paul wants. And here come Mansfield again, straight away, coming forward here with Benning, edge of the area, Benning gets in the strike, well blocked there on the edge of the penalty area by the Newport defender Dimitriou, breaks for Rose, back to goal, goes back one here, towards the halfway line, Mansfield hang on to the ball, and there's a better atmosphere here in the second half from a home point of view, the fans can see that the home side are doing much more, they're in behind again down the left hand side here, Hamilton into the penalty area, cuts it back, chance for Rose, oh he's put it high over the bar, even if there were three goals there it wouldn't have gone into the net, over the top and behind but again Mansfield much better, finding space, finding opportunities in wide areas and causing Newport all manner of problems. Such a difference already CJ Hamilton using his pace and all of a sudden Young Regan Paula right back. He had a pretty easy first half. He's thinking, God, oh, this next 45 is going to be long. Um, he got in behind him really well there, Hamilton. Lovely pullback. Rose, I'm afraid that was a poor finish. Technique, they're not easy when they roll back towards you. It is. It's not difficult to scoot those over the bar, is it? Which is what has happened. I'm slightly surprised that it's Rose down the middle, but I guess he's flanked by two pace merchants, isn't he? And Walker and, and Hamilton. It's vital, I think, that, that Hamilton and Walker drive in field and don't just hang wide. They're quite dynamic players, though, aren't they? They're going to pop up all over the place, I think. Yeah, but it's, it's a bold move from Flickcroft. He, he, he's looked at it. 3 5 2. No, I'm going to change it up. Let's be positive. 3 4 3 and give Newport County something to think about. And already, just a couple of minutes into the second half, it's the exiles that are worried. 48 minutes gone, Mansfield nil, Newport nil, but Mansfield coming forward again, a strike wide off target this time from Geffen Jones, drifting in from the right side. Look, they're not hitting the target at the moment, but there's so much more intensity there. Yeah, what's, gonna, what's the response going to be, I wonder, from, from Michael Flynn? I can see he's in deep discussions beneath us with his assistant. They're looking at it and they're thinking, right, 3-4-3, three, three, what can we do to counter this? How can we regain the initiative here? Because, as you can hear from the atmosphere around us, which has just been cranked up several gears, all of a sudden this, this playoff has a different vibe to it. The Mansfield fans making loads more noise now. They finally have something to shout about. Their side coming forward and... Doing the damage they were doing to so many teams earlier on this league season. Interesting stand, this one going to extra time and possibly penalties as well. And so throw in here to Newport on the left hand side, Butler the left back. But Dimitriou, as ever, going over to take these throw ins, and this one is heading in one direction. Yeah, he's got a very long throw, hasn't he? He will be able to find a penalty spot area. Attacking the end where the Newport fans are. Newport in all white this evening with his throw in. Dimitriou steps forward now, launched it into the penalty area and is headed behind by Pierce at the expense of a corner. It's such a good weapon, it really is, Dimitriou. That is an absolute missile. He has launched that 40 yards and it's forced a really cheap corner. And Newport love these situations. The big guns are forward corner for Newport, flighted in from the left hand side, Mansfield able to deal with it but it's recycled to the left wing now, Wilmot takes a touch, corner of the penalty area, lifts a high one towards the far post, free header, oh what a chance there for Scott Bennett, incredible opportunity, free header inside the six yard box, right on his head and he's put it over the bar, should score Scott Bennett, that is a free header, he's only eight yards out and he skied it over the crossbar, lovely ball in from Wilmot that's better from Newport County. It's all about playing the percentage game for them. They need the ball to be in the Mansfield town half. But from there, those pace merchants for the Stags can't hurt them. The flank was up for offside. Ah. It wouldn't have counted, but still should be burying that chance, it, it, really. It wasn't a difficult header. It was, it was a lovely ball in from Wilmot in the recycled corner. Again, it was Sheehan. When the corner was cleared initially, the midfielder Sheehan has really impressed me tonight. He was first to the loose ball. He played it wide to Wilmot. He's been excellent. First chance, really, for Newport in this second half. Pierce 
does well there to bring the ball away from the back high one forward towards Rose it breaks in midfield now for McDonald he goes back though Turner on the halfway line for the home side the Stags carrying the ball upfield and it's Turner of all people bringing it forward looking for CJ Hamilton but can't quite find his teammate and Newport will bring it away we have it on the right hand side it's a high one forward by Paul but it goes all the way through to Logan at the other end and a bright green fluorescent goalkeeper kit tonight spins the ball through his hands and out of the penalty area and he will bring it forward and launch it forward high into the air Rose drops off the front to head it on but it's headed back by the Newport captain Mark O'Brien who could quite easily not be playing tonight had he been sent off in that first leg been booked as well hasn't he this evening so yeah, he's been two yellow cards in two right? games Michael Flint screaming here with the fourth official Peter Wright had a decision which went against his side it's been a game of two halves so far 52 minutes gone Mansfield nil Newport nil here on TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL from in here for Mansfield which will be taken by Gethin Jones on loan from Fleetwood Town since January he was a Everton youth player in the past and actually represented Wales at under 21 level as well having been born in Australia throwing taken by him here midway inside the Newport half down the right goes back to McDonald who plays it back into the centre circle now Mansfield in possession with Mellis I've seen so much more of the ball in this second well, half we didn't see any they? passages like this in the first half where they're just popping the ball around Mellis who's a good technician in the middle of the park so he, he didn't get on the ball like that so it's been a big change around in, a, in just eight minutes incredible really Pierce trying a bit too much and gives the ball away in the end he's a confident player clearly and uh, the ball goes out off him in the end for a throw in to Newport County last in the third tier in the 1986-87 season after seven years at that level suffered successive relegations though and the club did finish uh, sorry didn't finish the 88-89 season they were expelled came back in the 10th tier and now they're looking to try and get back into league one and it just shows how far the club have come in what is relatively a short space of time they've done brilliantly they really have um yeah i played against them just before i retired uh, in the national league south so so that was where they'd got to at that point and it wasn't long after that they, they they got themselves into the efl so so yeah onwards and upwards for for newport county and and this manager they've got is a gem he really is michael flynn knows what he's doing he'll be sought after we know that but for as long as he's here i think they're going to be pretty successful Wilmot has a free kick for his side wide on the left hand side here he curls it high into the penalty here towards the far post but it goes out in the end of the what was a Newport attacker Mark O'Brien for a goal kick to Mansfield yeah Michael Flynn done ever so well he won't remember me when we go and do the post-match interviews afterwards but I certainly remember him we were actually at university together <laughs> he, uh, I didn't expect him to see him in the dugout because he was doing a degree at Staffordshire University in professional broadcasting and sports writing as well he was uh, often in the dreaded lecture on a Monday afternoon doing uh, law for journalists. That was horrendous. Oh, it? Yeah, no, I can imagine. Ah, so the only laws he he worries about now are the football <laughs> one is on the on the pitch. So why why won't he remember you? Well, you know, I was just a face in the you know. crowd, but we were all, oh my God, it's Michael Flynn, you know. <laughs> And the other footballers there, Jason Lee, Darren Rack, Paul Hall. Yeah, yeah. Lots of familiar names. Yeah, yeah Jason Lee was the pineapple head, wasn't he? Well, that's how everyone recognised him. Oh, it's a pineapple head sitting on, a, on row Z here. <laughs> anyway, throw in here to Newport on the left-hand side. Five yards up from the corner flag, Dimitri going for the long one again. Here he goes, through the mud and onto the playing surface. Now, good header away, though, it was by... Rose who was back there just about the smallest man on the pitch back up to Dimitri on the left his ball in isn't great curl towards goal now and Logan going down to his left hand side there it was struck by O'Brien the skipper who was forward but didn't quite have the power behind it and Logan with a comfortable save it was, yeah it was a comfortable enough save but again it's those long throws from Dimitri that are causing all sorts of problems they're not loopy at all are they the, the trajectory is so flat he flings it in at 
you know, what, what looks 100 miles an hour, it's very difficult to deal with. Mansfield being forced back here, Alex McDonald in particular, the former Oxford man, goes back to the goalkeeper, Logan plays it away towards the halfway line, picked up in midfield now by McDonald, he plays the ball down the right hand side, trying to chase it there is Rose, who's gone down, he was caught, but so was uh, Dimitriou, it was a real 50-50 there, and both players coming off badly, and the assistant in the end has just given a throw into Mansfield. Ooh, yeah, that was, that was a really meaty challenge, Dimitriou, so aggressive on Rose not mucking around at all there was he right by the touchline big tough centre half he's picked himself up as for Rose definitely getting a spot of treatment there that's a, that's a good old fashioned reducer that is. that is that is a centre half saying to a striker this is this is what you're going to expect between now and the final whistle son are you up for it? The fair play, you know, the referee hasn't given a free kick either side, and that's the kind of tackle that fans want to see. Isn't the ball. It? Yeah, it was it was just hard. Really hard. And I think just, maybe there was a follow through that caught caught Rose, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, it was it was one of those challenges that where the centre half was trying to intimidate the forward. Rose isn't a big guy. And he's been given a little warning there. Yeah, Rose back on his feet and moving around freely, which is good to see. You're listening to Mansfield against Newport on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football, providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. And it's a throw in here to Mansfield on the right hand side to be taken by Geffen Jones, the Welshman. Rose waiting for the signal to come back on here. Jones lifts it down the line now. Nodded on, edge of the area, CJ Hamilton inside the box on the right, on his left foot, goes back outside the area, plays it back up the line. McDonald, corner of the penalty area, goes past one, flights the ball into the penalty area now, and it was just struck there at Walker at the near post, and in the end it bounces off his head high into the sky, but the flag up for offside anyway, it wouldn't have counted. Clever play, wasn't it, from McDonald, just dropped a shoulder, beat his man, and a lovely ball into the box. It's so much better from Mansford, the 3-4-3 is working like a dream compared to what we saw from him in the first half which was practically nothing but CJ Hamilton he's much more he, I don't know why he doesn't play in this position week in week out and he's wasted in that wing back role he's a forward and you need to use that pace inside opposition territory Newport coming forward shot from range oh he's oh. off the bar it was a screamer from Scott Bennett that would have been an astonishing goal there and for the third time in this game the Mansfield bar has seen the ball bounce off it oh it's a rocket it really is from Scott Bennett he's come so close to scoring already in this game but this was the closest what a hit Josh Labadee, wide to the right-hand side. Newport have momentum at the moment. It's picked up by Regan Paul. Corner of the penalty edge, tries to flight it in. It's blocked. Still have a chance for his teammate there. Where's the ball going? Out for a throw by the corner flag there as Wilmot picked up the loose ball. Oh, it, it must have been 30 yards out from Scott Bennett. Dead centre. And it just was like an arrow, wasn't it? It didn't move at all. The ball did not deviate. It crashed off the crossbar as well. Rebounded quite a distance back into play. That's twice Bennett has now hit the bar. The Newport fans absolutely loving it behind the goal. Backing their side all the way this evening. Nearly an hour gone here at the One Call Stadium. Long throw from the right-hand side delivered in. Played away by Pierce on his left foot. Back to the corner of the penalty. Headed in again and this time helped out by Jacob Mellis. It's a throw in on the right-hand side here for Newport. And even though it's close to the halfway line than it is the goal, the long throw is coming back again from Mickey Dimitriou. <laughs> well why not keep using it because Mansford don't like it that much is obvious high one in very high very long it drops in the Mansfield penalty and they're able to clear it away in the end one one back forward Pierce gets his head to the ball drops on the edge of the air she and strikes oh Conrad Logan with an absolutely outstanding save away to his left hand side he has kept Mansfield in this tie at times over the last two matches and that was one of the best saves of the lot quality strike even better save from Conrad Logan it's Josh Sheehan star man for me in the middle of the engine room for Newport County on the volley is heading for the top corner that is a really athletic stop with his left hand Corner on the right-hand side for Newport. In swinger towards the edge of the penalty area. And uh, claims of handball there. Comes back out to Sheehan. Mansfield able to block it temporarily. Labadee still inside the box. Trying to find a way forward. T goes down. Pierce with a challenge. Goal kick given at the end of it. Well, oh, oh, oh. dear, oh dear, oh dear. Not easy for the referee to do this one tonight. Challenges going in all over the place. 
Yes, but that wasn't a penalty. I think we can see that from here. But even though Mansfield have been a team reborn since half time, Newport could have had another couple. Could have had a couple goals in the second half. Hit the crossbar. That save from Logan was tremendous. It really was. I mean, you think about the chances here. Newport, if, if they were 5 nil up, it wouldn't be ridiculous, would it, based on the chances and the, and the amount of efforts they've had in and around the 18-yard box. Amazing, really, that it's still goalless. Throw into Newport inside their own half. It's the 35th meeting between the two sides tonight. And it's been a good one. Mansfield coming forward down the left here, inside the Newport half, Mellis with space, time to run on the defence as he picks up the ball in between the lines, but Newport get bodies back there in the end. Worldwide wide again though as McDonald plays the ball out to the right to Jones. A forceful ball forward into Walker, edge of the penalty area, making a nuisance for himself, goes over, right on the edge of the penalty area, free kick given, the referee had a really good view of that, the linesman on this side as well, and then he fell into the penalty area, but contact on his leg, for me, just outside. Well, it's millimetres outside the 18-yard box, very close to conceding a penalty there, Josh Labadee, it's on Tyler Walker, and well, what a chance this is for the Stags. Right on the line, obviously, it's probably three yards or so to the right of the D. Suits the left footer, Binning, the substitute is over it, McDonald too. I can't see how Tyler Walker is going to walk away from this one either. I think he has, actually. Yeah, he's, he's inside the box. Yeah, Hamilton having a word as well. There's four standing over at the moment. Benning, McDonald will be the right-footed option. Benning, I think. Left foot, this has to be a left footer. Benning does have scoring form against Newport in the past. He scored against them nearly four years ago. He steps up to this one here, round the wall, but straight down the goalkeeper who saw it all the way. That's decent goalkeeping, that is, from Joe Day. Straight at him, yes, but could easily have spilled it. It was struck quite well, and it just bounced before it reached him, Joe Day. The fans behind Joe Day's goal, shielding their eyes from the sun here, which is still shining brightly. This time approaches half past seven now here in Mansfield such a nice night for football perfect conditions great pitch high ball forward here for Newport it flies over Jamil Matthew hasn't really been involved in this second half we saw him right at the start of the first getting himself involved making himself a nuisance but in the second half hasn't seen the no, ball no you bang on with that assessment in the first period he gave the defenders the run around really he, in the air he's he's such a handful and they were they were pretty direct weren't they Newport County in the way that they got the balls into the box for him to win the win the balls and then, and then get on to the second balls but yeah Jamil Matt has been starved of the ball second half there have been some big attendances in the playoffs so far and a big gate here, 7,361 for this League 2 clash. Newport have a man down at the moment and so do Mansfield now after Tyler Walker hit the deck. The referee calling the Newport player over and it's uh, Sheehan who's uh, in hot water at the moment. Though I don't think he's going to be shown a card here by Michael Salisbury, the referee. Yeah, we are entering the Tyler Walker zone though. Of the 22, this is a great stat, 22 goals he scored in the league this year, 16 have been in the final half an hour of matches, and 9 have been in the last 15 minutes, so... Where did you pull that from? <sighs> yeah, I've got, I got, I got, a, got a database, <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> so I was saving it. Me on. No, not at all. But, but I'm, into, I'm into all that, and, and, and Tyler Walker has been known for, for being the late, late goal merchant, and that's the reason why he really gets taken off. You wouldn't take him off, would you, if you've got that kind of record? So even though Newport have been superb in this game, he's still goalless and Walker probably going to be at his most dangerous. Newport still with this man down on the far side as we look over here. Slowly getting back to his feet at the moment, but he's flat out on his back. And, uh, so it gives us a bit of a, a break in play. Yeah, but the players are taking water on board, especially the Mansfield guys. A little bit. Mark O'Brien, who's down. Yeah. It's him, the skipper. He's obviously on a yellow, but influential player. And he's he's probably the most dangerous, even though Matt is bigger. O'Brien tends to get on the end of 
throw-ins or corners or free kicks more often. Well, he's got to go off here while Mansfield had this free kick Ooh, on the right. It's a problem. And, uh, it'll be swung into the Newport penalty area. Ten yards inside off the right-hand touchline. Benning curls it in now. Not a bad delivery at all. Not on. Oh, what a save from Day to deny Ben Turner, who just glanced off the top of his head towards the far corner. Lifting in again now. Turner again. And the goalkeeper denies him again. <laughs> Double save from Joe Day. From the same man, Ben Turner, the first save's a good one. It's, a, it's another delicious in-swinging free kick, left-footed from Benning. Just a little flick, that's all it takes. At the top of the head, heading towards the bottom corner, he pushes it away, full length, Joe Day. He is having an outstanding campaign. The second save's more routine. But what a second half this has been, much more even. Newport with the majority of the chance in the first half. Mansford with the most of them in the second and although Newport hit the bar with that stunning strike from range from Scott Bennett it is Mansfield who now have that momentum and their fans are starting to believe again oh they're definitely believing they're lucky let's get it right Mansfield but they're not behind so far even the no, second half Newport could have easily scored three goals first half could easily have been three up um, but Mansfield themselves have created two or three great opportunities second half and, and Joe Day was a spectator wasn't he until half time all of a sudden he's interested and he's involved Matt has gone down here after a challenge from Pierce to the back of his head rubbing it furiously at the moment looking towards the referee who doesn't seem too interested <laughs> tells him to get on with the game yeah, he's not happy is he Jamil Matt I remember when he was he broke the record I think tra like a transfer record when he joined Fleetwood a few years back big money they spent on him and it didn't really happen for him there but he's had the best season of his career this year 14 goals previously got 10 with Kidderminster yeah. in the uh, National League that's it and he's got three in his last five appearances he's not close to scoring on too many occasions tonight but he might have a chance here because Newport have got a free kick here wide on the left hand side both teams have given away a lot of these free kicks in wide areas haven't they they have yeah it's always been an aggressive game it's been spiky a bit spiteful really at times and the referee is, has had to be on his toes goodness me Michael Salisbury was put under pressure by Flickcroft had a header kick off and, and he yeah he's had a lot of decisions to make over halfway through the second half 68 and a half minutes gone nil nil curled in here for Newport Mansfield able to clear it away and it will be helped out to the left hand side here towards CJ Hamilton free kick for Mansfield who are asking for a yellow card to be shown here the referee not interested though well, it would have been a second yellow actually for Dan Butler so it's a good job referee wasn't interested from a Newport perspective that's what that's the situation Mansfield want counter attack short on bodies at the back Newport with Tyler Walker running into space behind I think it was just good defending there they blocked off his run nicely Newport have extended the flow somewhat Matt trying to get away from Turner here down the right hand side but Turner using his superior strength there to bully Matt off the ball who hits the deck and the booze from the home fans around us not happy but I think the referee got that one right and Mansfield trying to break out down the right hand side well they could have kept that one in there for a second Jones could have got to the ball he's getting both barrels of everyone around it isn't it looked like the ball was going to fly out of play then it just held up on the turf and in the end he was only about a foot away from it and he gave up on it but uh, the fans around us not too happy with his lack of ambition like he had a parachute on his back there it, was, <laughs> it just slowed down didn't it it was very bizarre and yeah it was a lovely switch play a uh, switch pass rather from, from Mansfield which they haven't done enough of really but yeah, I mean, he must be strong, Ben Turner, to, to bully Jamil Matt like that, because Matt is built like a heavyweight boxer. Walker, inside the Newport half, he goes down from a challenge from Scott Bennett, no free kick given. Slightly surprising, that one, and the ball is played for by Butler down the left touchline. Ammon trying to get the better of, better of Pierce, sorry, but uh, the flag up for offside anyway. I haven't seen much of Paul Drummond in this second right. half either. He's been quieter. Yeah, <laughs> we wonder what Michael Flynn might do here to change things up will he go two up top potentially Ammon has scored a lot of his goals from these wide areas where he just goes in I think he's needed at the moment to, to do a bit of a shift strike from the edge of the area here and it's from Walker and it didn't look as though it would cause too many problems there for Day but in the end the goalkeeper having to palm that one away and it's run behind for a Stags corner yes yeah, a snapshot isn't it on the edge of the box the ball just bounces up he hits it hits it into the ground Tyler Walker but it is heading towards that bottom corner. Joe Day can't take any chances. I think he might have just dribbled wide. He pushes it away. Corner kick. And, wow, we're getting into the business end of the game now, aren't we? Less than 20 minutes left. 
With nearly 71 minutes gone here at the One Call Stadium. The home fans getting right behind their side. Corner from the left. It's an in swinger in towards the near post. The heads go up, but it's Jamil Matt's head which reaches which reaches the ball. Sorry, he clears it away. Benning picks it up again on the left. And Newport forcing Mansfield out here, but Benning swings it in on his right foot. It's going to break inside the penalty area, and it bounces almost off the shoulder there, I think, of Tyler Walker. And thankfully, from a Newport perspective, into the arms of the goalkeeper. I oh, just didn't have time to react. It was a great win in the air by the centre-back Pierce, Christian Pierce, but he knocks it down to his teammate, and it just hits him really in the chest, and, and the attack is over. Game getting stretched there. Matt looked like he got the ball down the right hand side, but just got a bit too keen as soon as McDonald felt the contact from behind. He hit the deck. Yeah, oh, look, real nerve jangling. 20 minutes or so we've got in store here because at the end of a really arduous, energy sapping season, the last thing these two sets of players want is extra time and a potential penalty shootout. So, um, I do think that both sides will be going all out for a goal here in the closing stages. But that's the way we're heading. And with the sides playing the first leg on Thursday night and this second leg coming on Sunday, tiredness and fatigue could well be an issue in the minutes to come. Beautiful evening here. The cloud that was in the sky have pretty much disappeared. It's a wonderful setting here. The terraced house is just behind the stand over on the far side, which isn't being used. And uh, there's really, we can see the roads behind the stand, there's, there's no traffic there around. There really is nobody on the road. It is incredible. It, Mansfield is a ghost town right now. Everyone is either here, or they're watching it on TV, or listening on the radio. It's, it's the only thing in town, isn't it? The only ticket in town, Mansfield, in the playoffs. But look, after a no-show in the first half, and that's what it was, they just didn't show up. They have at least given themselves a, a, given a good account of themselves since half time, and it's been it's had a nice ebb and flow the second half. We've had periods of good Mansfield pressure, then we've had Newport cause problems at the other end. Now it's Mansfield's turn. I guess ultimately this game has been about the goalkeepers or this tie rather you know we saw Conrad Logan making so many saves in the first leg and he's made a couple here tonight Day has been important as well as we saw a couple of minutes ago yes just showing the importance of having a solid goalkeeper behind your defence definitely and I think that Conrad Logan has, has been the star really over the one and three quarter games he was the man of the match in, in South Wales and, and here he has pulled off a couple of really good saves as well so without him Ramsfield would, would certainly be behind in the tie and they'd probably be staring at, at end of season so got a lot to thank him for and look his, his work may not be done especially yeah. if there's a shootout to come and if there is a shootout wow you put the, with the, the, the outfield players but might have a job scoring scoring a lot of goals in that shootout because these two custodians are on fire Newport with a man down at the moment back on his feet now Logan's actually won the League 2 playoffs before back in 2008 do you know who with? a team no longer in the EFL ah ok uh, no I don't know Stockport ah ok played against Stockport played against Stockport I think in the championship so I'm certainly in League 1 yeah, they were in the championship back in the early noughties. Mm. Very, very early noughties. Yeah, I think it was in League One. They have a great fan base behind them. Yeah. Area of the world doing well at the moment with Salford winning at Wembley yesterday. Yeah, I was there, there yesterday. Yeah, loved it. Great day, especially for Salford, obviously. The, the class of 92. They were, they were excellent, Salford City. I think they'll be good addition to the EFL. And they'll come into the league as well with a budget probably bigger than plenty of sides in that league. They will, but th th there are more stringent guidelines, aren't there, in terms of uh, financial fair play in the EFL. So, so I think their their progress might slow a little bit, but it's not just about money with Salford. It's also the expertise of, of the likes of Neville or the two Nevilles, Beckham, Skulls, etc. Gigs. Josh Labadee has gone off here because of the injury. Adi Aziz has come on in his place. Long throw in here towards the Mansfield penalty area. And it's gone out off the defender for a corner on the far side in front of these Newport fans who are ready to go absolutely bonkers if a goal goes in in front of them. Well, it's right in front of them, as you say. Adi Aziz for Labadee. That's a positive move. He's a more attacking player, as he is. He won the penalty, didn't he, in that first leg. So it's a little roll of the dice there from Michael Flynn, and it's a positive one corner for Newport on the right in swinger towards the near post well headed away there by Rose again on defensive duty 
and sees another League 2 playoff winner with Wimbledon. Ball flighted in here, but too long, and it clips the back of the net as it goes behind the cross from the right-hand side with too much on it there. Goal kick to Mansfield. Do you see a winner inside the final 14 <laughs> minutes? No, no, with 76 played. Uh, well, it would, yeah, I mean, the, both teams have got a real goal threat in this second half. So, yeah, absolutely, I could see a late goal deciding matters. But I said at the outset tonight that I did expect a long evening. I thought extra time might be in the offing. Not much between these two teams. And it, even though it was one-sided in the first half in, in terms of Newport dominance, over the course of the 90, it's, uh, it's evening out, isn't it? It is. Newport trying to build a move forward towards Aziz, who has the floppy braided hair. Mansfield coming down the right, but there's a bit of a blind pass play there by the Scott Alex McDonald as he tries to play it into the right channel for Tyler Walker. And the ball goes out in the end of Adi Aziz. It's a Mansfield throw inside their own half, approaching the halfway line. Just looking at the shape. It's more of a 4-2-3-1 now. For Newport County, Ammon is playing in a in more central number 10 role with Aziz on this left hand side where Ammon has been. Ammon's done nothing really, has he on the left? I think he's much better in those central areas. Pierce here with a loose touch, Matt is on to him. Pierce being forced back towards his own goal line near the corner flag. Manages to clear the ball away in the end up the line and it goes out off McDonald. Hamilton was really lively at the start of the second half, but he's quietened down, hasn't it? True, yeah, I think they've got to grips with him and. Yeah, I think Newport in general has settled down after that blistering start to the second half from Mansfield where they, they shocked them, I think, with the change of system and the, and, the, and the change in tempo. Since then, Newport have regrouped. I think that Flynn probably deserves credit for getting the mess right messages across to his players. Substitute David Pipe is drying the ball on his shirt here, ready for Dimitri to take this throw on the left, in line with the edge of the penalty area. And one of the fans in the stand, <laughs> well, Dimitri had the ball in the air, ready to take this long throw, and the fan has come from behind him and popped it out of his hands uh, onto the pitch. That's a yellow card, isn't it, for the fan? Long throw into the box, nodded on, it's going to break in there and pierce a big hoof away out to play onto the far side oh it's been kept in by CJ Hamilton what a takedown that is the counter could be on Nellis inside the centre circle plays it forward CJ Hamilton racing away down the left hand side he's forced wide only Walker in the middle Hamilton left wing back to the edge of the penalty area Benning joining in his high ball in and it's headed away in the end by O'Brien drops on the edge of the area speculative effort by Rose and it's been deflected behind for a corner a sensational touch from CJ Hamilton everybody in the stadium thought well that's out for a throw in he was the only one that believed he could control it and boy did he and it was a great counter linked with Melis who's been so quiet tonight by his usual standards any goal now could be a goal which sends either side to Wembley that is how tight this is it is still 1-1 after the first leg. 0-0 tonight with 79 minutes played at the one Course Stadium. Benning's corner from the right for Mansfield. Deep one towards the far post. Hits the head of Matt, but it's not clear yet for Newport. They get it out now, and Portrick Amont will try and bring it away as the well side try and counter. It's played down the right-hand side for the run of Dan Butler, who is tackled. It's a throw into Newport, right in the halfway line. They're taking it quickly. High throw forward for the run of Sheehan down the right wing. Pierce is there with him, and Sheehan's done ever so well. He actually didn't have anyone in the middle, but it's hit Pierce, gone behind, corner to Newport. He has been brilliant tonight, Josh Sheehan. He has been everywhere inside the heart of the engine room for Newport County, and there, quick thinking from the throw-in. Do they settle down? Do they slow things down? No, he's like, I'm off. I'm going to show you an angle, and from nowhere... He has won the corner. He had no support there. He blasted it into the defender to deliberately win the corner. How important might that be? Can they profit from this corner? And you pose a 2v1 out there. Do they want to play it short? Probably not. The game just getting stretched in certain areas now. Ten minutes to go. We've hit the 80-minute mark. Corner for Newport on the right. The referee having a word with Jimmy on Matt first of all. Inside the box. But it'll be an in-swinger from the right. Plenty of movement inside the penalty area. High one towards the far post. Matt goes for it. Couldn't quite connect. O'Brien trying to keep it in on the left. And he has. By the corner flag. He swings in the cross. The centre half towards the far post. A bit over hit. Trying to keep it in on the right there is Robbie Wilmot. But he can't keep it in play. And it's a throw in to Mansfield. Nine and a half minutes to go. Nerves starting <laughs> to get a little bit uh, twitchy now for both sets of fans. Without a doubt. Yeah, this is, this is it. The season comes down to this next 10 minutes or so it could do we might be in for extra time and possibly penalties of course but but yeah these 10 minutes please 
that the, the defenders will be thinking, not me. I'm not going to make a mistake. I'm not going to be the one. It's about personal responsibility. You go with your man. You do not let your guy go between now and the final whistle. Free kick has been given here. You're listening to Mansfield against Newport on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's Fun Football, providing over 5 million hours of fun grassroots football to the UK by 2022. It is still nil-nil, but it's been a good nil-nil as they often are in the playoffs so much at stake Wilmot over this free kick for Newport County on the left hand side 15 yards inside the Mansfield half all the players bunched together on the edge of the penalty area this will be sent from the left to the right and Wilmot stepping up to it now curls it in good delivery as well in towards Aziz it drops headed back into the penalty area Brian helps it forward helped into the box still there Mansfield getting away it's not the way yet driven back in Brock's going in oh and Logan is behind it in the end well definition of a goal now scramble there and Logan has now gone down after a pass with Jamil Matt on the edge of the penalty area and the referee showing Matt a yellow card for preventing the play from restarting quickly <laughs> Wow, what a goal mouth scramble that was. Newport County, how they've not scored tonight, I can't quite believe it really. The ball just wouldn't fall for them, wouldn't sit down. They would, I think there was three or four efforts at goal. In the end, there's a blaster right at Comrade Logan. And, and in the end, he keeps hold of the ball. But yeah, they're plugging away, aren't they, the visitors? Both sides have only made one change so far. Is that a surprise or both coaches keeping options in the locker with extra time looming at the yeah, moment yeah I think the, the, the last point you made is probably the most relevant there yeah it's uh, keep the powder dry I do think for Mansfield it's not really happening for, for Danny Rose up top you won the Otis Khan scored twice in the league fixture for Mansfield against Newport he's an option Nicky Jose Will Atkinson these are guys plenty of experience yeah Jose uh, season striker 24 goals for Swindon in the uh, what season was it so the 15-16 season it's never really quite hit those heights again but a man who knows where the goal is yeah it's just I mean yeah Rose has offered a great deal I mean he's worked hard and clearly somebody the manager likes links play okay but doesn't look like scoring tonight I think that change is probably overdue ball up to Rose who has been important in areas certainly defensively with a couple of big headers away but he's presented the ball straight to Newport here edge of the area the strike coming in from the ever impressive Sheehan but it is blocked and Mansfield played away Rose going for a challenge now but it's a good header one there at the back by Paul no one quite knows what's going to happen here it's still nil nil and Walker trying to make his way through the middle here was having to try and make his way around two or three Newport players and in the end just went down but there was no foul in there no referee was very wise there he didn't make the decision based on the opinions of those in the main stand with us here that's what um, fans screaming for a foul but it wasn't high ball forward by day right at the end of the day the sun really going down now and a small amount of the pitch now still in sunshine Mansfield edge of the penalty area have a chance Walker oh he's past the post arguably Mansfield's best opportunity in the game and it fell to the man they'd have wanted it to fall to Tyler Walker found the loose ball on the edge of the penalty area got it onto his left foot drove it across goal but just past the post everyone was up everyone expected that net to ripple but it was out of play for a goal kick yeah Mansfield have waited 84 minutes for that moment that chance for Tyler Walker 12 yards out 1v1 with the keeper and he drags his shot left footed wide great play from CJ Hamilton I'm wondering whether the sun is an issue for the defenders we know the fans are, are, are shielding their eyes I think that it's a problem for the Newport defenders at the moment and, and those high balls are causing an issue and they didn't deal with that well Tyler Walker though, no excuse for his miss high ball forward here for Newport but Benning happy to watch that one out of play he's been a good introduction hasn't he he's been excellent actually yeah Benning good left foot and it's and it's freed up Hamilton it was it, it makes you wonder why that why well, didn't start that way really under Flickcroft but yeah Walker in the Tyler Walker zone as we talked about with those late goals you just thought the net's going to bulge here this is the moment but he snatched at it it's as simple as that 
Mansfield back in the playoffs for the third time, the first since 2004. Lost 4 1 on penalties after a 0 0 draw against Huddersfield Town in the final at the Millennium Stadium that day. And, uh, Mansfield have a player down here after a foul, and it's a free kick to them just outside the centre circle. Is it Rose? Not quite so. I can't see Rose anywhere else. I think it must be him. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Flake Croft is, is telling is it Nicky Ajoso to warm up. Well, a few energy bars being tossed onto the field to play now and the liquid gels that give players that extra boost of energy in the latter stages of games. Yeah, well, the fans are playing their part. Good support for Mansfield. The, the, the natives weren't happy with that half-time. They were booze, but are right behind their side now. And the second half has been so much better. Well, the mm. police... Sorry, go on. No, it's just been so much better. Yeah, the police are yeah, The police are standing in front of the Newport fans as though the game is about to finish here. Do they know something we don't? Benning swings the ball in towards Pierce at the far post and it goes off a defensive head and Mansfield have a corner. 88th minute, still nil-nil here at the One Call Stadium in this playoff semi-final second leg. If ever there is a time to score a goal in the playoff semi-final, that moment is now. Benning is coming over to take this corner in front of the players' tunnel, which is behind one of the stands here. The uh, Quarry Lane stand away to our right-hand side. The in-swinger coming up here. Massive chance for Mansfield. In it comes, and it's a good header away. Back there by Matt, who puts it out for another corner ball. Oh, so difficult to defend. The sun in their eyes as well, Newport's defenders. Ball in from Benning is quality. He's got a lovely left foot. Here he comes again, swung in again, second time around and a good header away by Matt again, who's been as important defensively as he, be, as he has been, sorry, in an attacking set. Benning on the right-hand side, rolls it back, lifted in by McDonald. good ball as well, the flick header just past the post, that was Rose's chance to make himself a hero. That was the one, wasn't it, for Danny Rose, lovely ball in, McDonald whipped it, right-footed, loads of bend, loads of pace on it, it's one of those for a centre-forward, just get a little bit of a glancing header on it, nestle in the bottom corner but what happened the ball was spinning away it was it was started off aiming towards that far post and it just bent away and Newport can breathe again I don't think I don't think those police away to our left are going to have to worry for a bit I think we're heading towards extra time here 88 and a half minutes gone a goal now would surely send the scorers to Wembley in the League 2 playoff final Tranmere or Forest Green will be their opponents who meet again tomorrow night down in Gloucestershire High ball forward here. Hamilton a bit detached on the left-hand side. It was played towards him, but it's back in his direction now. CJ Hamilton, a chance for him. The man who got the goal in the first leg goes past his man. He's taken down, free kick, and a yellow card will almost certainly follow. <laughs> I think it's uh, Paul, is it, who's going to go into the book? Yeah, it's, it's a good foul, though, because he was 1v1 there, and he knew he was a beaten man. Regan Paul, he might only be 20, but that's a, a tackle of experience. He... He thought, what's the lesser of the two evils? And I think that was definitely to bring him down. But they do have to defend this free kick, and it's in a good area. So many players out there now with yellow cards to their names from a Newport point of view. They've actually had six players booked. Labadee has departed. Paul O'Brien, Sheehan, Matt and Butler all still on. Mansfield free kick, bent in. Now the header towards goal, but past the far post by Turner. He's had a few chances in this game. Two of them came in a ten-second spell earlier in the half. But uh, that one just drifting past the far post. Leaning back, wasn't he, Ben Turner? But they've looked dangerous second half, particularly from those wide free kicks. Ben Turner has been a, a real threat. He's a, he's a big old lad, isn't he, at the heart of that back three for Mansfield. But that occasion, the header was two or three yards wide. We are about to go into added time, and there are going to be a minimum at the one call stadium here of four minutes. Alex McDonald's just got the sponsors man of the match. Tenacious display in midfield. He's done okay for Mansfield. It's hard to pick out Mansfield player really. The, the standouts I think have all been wearing the white shirts of Newport. And Newport have a free kick here again in a wide area, and again Robbie Wilmot is standing over it. Can he get his delivery on point now? Six assists he's come up with in the regular season. There's a yellow card that's been shown here to Mansfield's Gethin Jones. He's the first Mansfield player to be booked. Bit of a breeze drifting around the stadium now. I'm sure those Newport fans would love 
the wind to take this ball towards the Mansfield goal. We have played 45 seconds of added time. Wilmot swings it in, but it's not a good ball. And Mansfield are able to clear it away. Mellis will bring it out from the back. The counter could be on here if they can get it forward quickly. They drive it over the top now towards Benning, who's forward. He nods on towards CJ Hamilton. Headed away by Dan Butler. And uh, in the end, the clearance takes it off the roof of the stand on the far side as we look across. It's a throw into Mansfield inside their own half. I think we're going to be getting ready for another 30 minutes of action. Yeah, I think so. It was a good piece of defending there from Dan Butler. He was last man up against CJ Hamilton, beat won the header. Walker holds the ball, back to goal, midway inside the Newport half. Mansfield work it from left to right here. Mellis switching the play out to the right, but not a great ball as he tries to find Jones. Newport clear, Mansfield pick it up again. Ammond high into the sky, loops one towards the right-hand side. Big, aggressive, Whoa. strong front pairing here of Aziz and Matt. And Newport have won a corner over on the right-hand side. Out of absolutely nowhere. I mean, you said earlier, Comrade Logan, he, he, he didn't... He didn't say he was fat, but he said he, he, he hinted that he lacked athleticism. I think there, a, a more sprightly keeper, someone that, that can run faster, might have kept that in play. Logan gave up on it, and Newport have themselves a free hit here. Can they profit from this corner? We are Everyone's now in up. the 93rd minute. Mansfield with everyone back. Newport, father goalkeeper, just about everyone forward. In swinger from the right, it's a high one towards the far post, Noddy back across goal, a chance in there, Turner with the header away, McDonald helping it out, he was fouled surely inside his own penalty area, Newport pick up the loose ball, lifted forward again this time by Regan Paul, into the box it goes, Mansfield need to clear the lines and in the end, Christian Pierce tries to but he's only looped it back into his own penalty area, Aaron edge of the box gets in the strike, it was spinning away, Mansfield able to get ahead to it anyway and in the end it's brought away by Tyler Walker, we've got 90 seconds left of added time, it is still Mansfield. Mansfield nil, Newport nil. It's been an absorbing second half. OK, no goals, but this has been end-to-end -end stuff. It's had a lovely ebb and flow, and it's been even in terms of the second half. Both teams have posed a real goal, goal threat, even though they haven't registered that strike. I think for the neutral it's been great, hasn't it? Because it wasn't over after the first leg. You know, everyone had something to come here to look forward to. Yep. High ball here towards... Jones on the right hand side from Mansfield picks it up corner of the penalty area it's left now for McDonald this may be the chance for Mansfield high ball in towards the far post CJ Hamilton missed his kick at the vital time and it's played away by Ammon Mansfield coming again though Mellis slips in the central midfield area Newport get the ball away Mansfield come again though this time bringing it forward with Sweeney down the left hand side we are in the 94th minute into the box it goes Walker with his back to goal can he get space for the shot no he can't he's taken off the ball and Newport bring it away free kick not given play goes on Jones down the right hand side drives in the shot Newport get their bodies in the way fully committed stuff from both sides Newport bring the ball out and they have it on the halfway line with Matt back to goal Pierce trying to get into him Matt though wriggles away rolls it back one Lifted forward now by Sheen, who coaxed it into the left channel. Too much on it. Out of play it goes. And that is the last action. Well, the first playoff semi-final second leg in the EFL this season won't be determined in the 90 minutes. 30 more minutes to come here. We are going into extra time. Don't go anywhere. All the action coming up very shortly. So the sides just going through their final preparations here. One or two. Getting a bit of medical treatment from the respective physios. Don't we see any more substitutions? We shall see. It doesn't look as though anyone's readying themselves at the moment. Uh, Christian Pierce, the Mansfield skipper, is just getting a bit, bit of a stretch, for, possibly for, for cramp. But yeah, big team talks there from Flickcroft and Flynn. Wonder what the messages might have been. But I, it's so hard to call which way this this game is going to go. Both goalkeepers have been exceptional. And both teams have goal threats, don't they, in terms not just with the, with the strikers, but from set pieces. And we've seen a lot of set pieces tonight, haven't we, James? But they've both got two, two groups of defenders that come forward and, and pose a real menace inside the opposition penalty box. Come on, you stags, sing the home fans. The two skippers back in the centre circle to do another coin toss here. And it may not be the last one if this one goes all the way to penalties. We shall see. Adrian Clark stood alongside me. If you had to pick a winner at this point. Oh, I, was, I, I, I said at the outset that I slightly favoured Newport, and I still do. But 
look, it, this is, I also said it was a 50-50 game, and that's definitely turned you out to be the case. You said everything, basically. Yeah, yeah, covering no, all bases. No, I, yeah, I have covered all bases, quite, quite cleverly. Uh, <laughs> subtly. No, yeah, well, not, not that subtly, really. Will Atkinson is on. But no, I, I, I thought it would be close. I said it was a 50-50 game, but, but when, when pushed, I fancied Newport. I still do. Yeah, Will Atkinson has come on here for Jacob Mill. It's actually transfer listed by the club last summer. A remarkable return for him into the fold. Yeah, I remember seeing him quite a lot when he was playing for Southend United. Will Atkinson, isn't he? He's a busy midfielder. He gets forward, he, he can score goals, create goals. So, will he have a part to play, I wonder? Fresh legs, of course, important at this stage. We are back underway. And Newport attacking the other end this time, as they did in the first half. And they've given the ball away here. Benning trying to pick it up down the left-hand side. Free kick. It's gone against Newport here, which seems a bizarre decision by the officials, given by the assistant referee on this near side, Matthew Lee. And the assistant on the other side, I've been waiting to get this one in all evening. The assistant on the other side is Anthony De Costa. <laughs> Not formally of blue, but the fans will all be rising together if there's a goal that goes <laughs> in here. All rise, all rise. <laughs> Anthony De Costa, yeah, he's a Spurs fan, isn't he? Um, good lad, I've met him once, he was nice, oh, very friendly. Clown of the end, wow, is it, really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mansfield nil, Newport nil. We are bringing you the uh, playoffs, I promise you. And uh, we are one minute into, addition, uh, into extra time, sorry. Nil-nil after the 90 minutes, no away goals, of course, it was 1-1 from the first leg. These two sides playing for a place in the Wembley final two weeks yesterday. All the finals from Wembley live on TalkSport. League 2 on the Saturday, League 1 on the Sunday and Championship on the Monday. Which, as things stand, look as though it could be Leeds against Aston Villa. That could be quite some tie to look forward to at the end of the playoff trilogy. No matter who it is, it will be a tasty game. Matt on the left-hand side here for Newport gets away from one into the penalty area. Jimmy Matt trying to get away from a second. He's gone past three. Jimmy Matt tries to poke it across goal. In the end, Logan dives on the ball and is able to keep it in play and he prevents the corner. Matt showing what he's all about there, though. Yeah, he's not just an aerial threat. Good feet there. Lovely balance as well, going left and right. They didn't want to touch him because he was inside the box. Didn't want to make the foul. That was excellent play from Jimmy Matt. Yeah, the uh, Leeds Derby second leg should be spicy. Did you see the, the chant from Leeds? I did, yeah. That was Outstanding very, very good, yeah. chant, wasn't it? Great Frank Lamp Stop crying, Frank Lampard. I, honestly, it wins. Hands down, chant of the season. You love football at the times like this in the season. You've got the fans being creative. You've got excellent games, as, as we've seen all this week in the Champions League and the Premier League. And, you know, just about every game we've had, there's been something crazy going on. This has been a great game as well. A great advert for League Two. Both sides fully committed. No goals, but they've been both at it and both going for the win. There's no one who's come here and tried to, you know, shut up shot and try and hit on the counter or anything Slugged like that. Slugged it out tonight. Two, two good teams slugging it out. I did the play, I commentated on the, the National League promotion final yesterday, Salford City against AFC Fylde, and, and I have to say, I enjoyed that game. Salford impressed me, but this is a step up. You can see the difference. There's more pace, more physicality, a little bit more quality on show. So, so yeah, this is it's been high standard actually for League Two tonight. Everyone from Mansfield here tonight for a game that started at six o'clock. Could be going on for a while yet. Time is to strike eight. As he's trying to nod on on halfway here, Pierce picks it up, carries it forward here for Mansfield, short, square ball, just outside the centre circle, inside the Newport half, Benning now picks it up on the left wing, drives in field a bit, Hamilton looking for the run down the left-hand side, trying to get in behind, he has got in behind, CJ Hamilton, just like composure there, that's the first real time that he's got in behind Newport in this game really, and he's had the pace to burn against the defender, just had to drive it across goal, but he's blazed it high over the bar. It wasn't great, it was in a similar position to the goal he scored down the Rodney Parade, in the first leg he got into that left hand side position in that game he, he, he slotted it side foot didn't he into the near top corner I think he was trying to do the same again but the technique wasn't right reminds me a little bit of, of Theo Walcott you know um, CJ Hamilton He's, it's all about it, it, pace is his primary weapon isn't it he sometimes you know, consistency yeah leadership. exactly yeah but you can see that he can be destructive on his day but there is a little bit of inconsistency with his technique four minutes into added time Mansfield nil Newport nil here at the One Call Stadium. Second leg of this 
League 2 playoff semi-final. And it's back at the moment with the Newport goalkeeper. And it's a high ball forward by Day, but it can't be kept in play. And uh, Mansfield have a throw in six of the last seven League 2 playoff semi-finals where the first leg has ended all square. The side at home in the second leg has progressed. The only exception being Coventry, who beat Notts County last season. I was there for Talk Sport 2. That was an outstanding performance from Coventry. Remember it well. Josh Mansfield coming into this with one win in six. Newport with that fantastic unbeaten run. Haven't lost a game since the 12th of March. Which takes some doing at this point in the season, especially where they came from. They know where they want to go, as do Mansfield. But neither can find a goal to take them within a game of League One. CJ Hamilton away down the left-hand side in the penalty here. Hamilton! He's put it into the away end again. A horrendous finish from the speedy winger. I'm not sure how he was trying to finish that. He got away down the left. He was inside the penalty area. Just had to put his foot through it. And he's almost clipped it over the bar. Got to do better there, CJ Hamilton. It's a sensational pass from Alex McDonald. He's clipped it over the top acres of space to run into for Hamilton it's the kind of opportunity he's been smashing home all season long one on one left hand side of the box he's blazed it well over it's not even close it well it truly has gone into Rosehead in the Newport end Day taking a kick here the wind holding the ball up in the air it looks like there a little bit yeah, it's definitely got up I know it's just sort of flying all over the place it was still earlier wasn't it big change in weather conditions <laughs> hasn't affected the game too much overall it's only come into play in the last five ten minutes or so both players have a man down here but Newport coming forward with Aziz down the right hand side fully committed challenge once again from Ryan Sweeney who drives the ball out of play to throw in to Newport County on the right hand side and I'm just trying to see who's going to go over and take this right, throw you know what's coming is it Dimitri I would imagine he's been slinging these in all evening long hasn't he uh, he's taking his time to get out to the right hand side <laughs> he's done to do a lot of running hasn't he in terms of going to take these throws anywhere inside the opposition half he's been charged with the task trying the ball on his shirt at the moment he's around 20 yards up from the corner flag right hand side launches it in now another high one in towards the penalty spot Mansfield get ahead to the ball away it goes coming back down the line now the away side here with Josh Sheen he can't get the ball in he can now oh. and it's past the far post and out of play you know when these chances come and go and you've got Hamilton skying them you just get a feeling a game is heading in a certain direction <laughs> spot kicks are looming aren't they that was good play from the best player on the pitch in my opinion Josh Sheehan he wins the ball he initially has the cross it's blocked then he wriggles past a couple of players but he does overhit the cross it's out of everybody's reach and it I thought for a moment it might fluke and go in off the far post but it just whistled by so a goal kick here to be taken by Conrad Logan and his kick does travel high towards the Newport penalty area but it's well headed away by O'Brien Gets it towards Matt, but knocked back by Sweeney. Now Amon, who's almost been a forgotten man in this game, really. Top scorer for Newport this season with 15, but hasn't really got involved in certainly the uh, final third too much in this, well, in what was the second half and now extra time. He's playing a much deeper role now, isn't it? He is, yeah. He's a good team worker. Should have scored first half when that near post was wide open for him. He found the side netting, but yeah, he's been quiet on Amon tonight. But he's done a job hasn't he he's, he's just dropped into central midfield and, and shielded the passes into the likes of McDonald and, and now Will Atkinson he stopped Mansfield from playing through the lines that's what they want to do their football inside but we haven't really seen a lot of moves where Mansfield have strung five, six, eight, ten passes together have we it's been much more direct than that Newport have still only made one change in this game they do have attacking options on the bench as well they've already brought on Adi Aziz Keenan Marsh Brown and Harry McCurdy who's on loan from Aston Villa who uh, he's going to be leaving the club at the end of the domestic season yeah some frank discussions going on in the technical area I think must be considering a change Huntsville have it on the right hand side and they can come forward now with five Newport players out of the game on the right, the home side have it with Jones driving at Wilmot. 
gets the ball in deep delivery over the head of Hamilton who uh, isn't a target man but he's certainly got plenty of height as well as pace and if the time just run correctly there could have attacked that one at the, near, at the far post true what I will say about the difference between these cl two clubs is budget and for that reason Mansfield who, who are the wealthier club have, they've got more firepower on the bench they've got a bigger squad a deeper squad Newport is, is a small group and uh, a, a lot of untried sort of relatively little known players on the on the subs bench for Newport tonight so, so maybe that's why he's reticent to make the change Mansfield with a header forward from Turner but it's sent straight back up to Aziz who stands in front of Turner holds onto the ball great hold up play there by the number 14 plays into the centre circle now to find Scott Bennett who plays a good ball out to the left hand side there's a running race on here who's going to get there first it's going to be Jones for the home side and does well to play it inside to Pierce. is it going to be a mistake from someone that costs their side here Mansfield trying to break forward with Walker but it's a good starting chance by uh, Patrick Amund who was back there at Outstanding. all people. One v one there, Podrick Ammons, the Newport forward <laughs> up against Tyler Walker, the, the last defender. Forward. Back. It's amazing, but he got there, didn't he, Ammons? Excellent. We've played ten and a half minutes of the first period of extra time, fifteen each way, remember, before penalty shootout. The Mansfield pro, the fans starting to get behind them again now. Still, it looks like a, a ghost town outside of this stadium everyone has got their eyes on this game or ears glued to a radio and a free kick has been given here for an offside call and uh, it's a free kick to Mansfield on the edge of their own penalty area which Conrad Logan will take 11 minutes whiz by haven't they in the first half of extra time Logan with this free kick takes it short goes out to the left hand side to Ryan Sweeney and the former Irish under 21 international plays it forward doesn't come to anything but the ball dropping now for Will Atkinson who goes right to the right hand side can Mansfield find a goal here they have it with McDonald tries to play it out to the right he gets the ball back again but Ma Mansfield give the ball away and there are some tired minds as well as legs out there now Newport bringing it clear played out to the right hand side nice ball by Sheehan and it's taken on here by Regan Paul getting away down the right hand side into the penalty area towards the forward there who was Matt but he couldn't do anything with the ball Flag up here, flags up here sorry for offside and it's a free kick to Newport County <laughs> looking at the substitute David Pipe very fast experienced player for Newport practically a member of the coaching staff he's <laughs> carrying the water bottles he's <laughs> playing his part screaming instructions yeah I think part of the reason he's on the bench is to, to yeah to be a, another member of the team the coaching team I mean but look it's Newport at the moment that have uh, got more territory Wilmot down the right hand side plays it infield back wide now to Paul who lifts a high ball into the penalty and nodded on towards the far post is he going to carry yes it is out of play goal kick given so so nervous I'm nervous <laughs> I don't even have a you know a team to support in this game but for what it must be like for the fans I mean they're, gr they're great games but really have you worrying about every single moment in the match that could cost your side of course yeah because they play 46 league games plus another playoff game it's game number 48 of the season and it could their goal their, their aim everything they've worked so hard to fulfil could be ripped away from them in an instant or they can grab it and grab that glory it's it's, it's exciting but also scary in equal measure for the players for the fans for the manager for the staff it's, um, but that's why we love the playoffs great drama they get the juices flowing don't they yeah a St George's flag waving furiously in the wind just away behind the stand on the far side and it could be the home of English football from one of these two sides all they need possibly given the way the game has gone so far is a goal but no one has been able to hit the net yet the crossbar has been hit a number of times by Newport notably in the second half by Josh Sheehan what an opportunity that was for them CJ Hamilton's had chances Walker had that chance from Mansfield when he was clean through drove that one past the post both sides have had a number of opportunities just haven't found a goal yeah, it could have been 4 all. really good it's, it's been one of those games ball in here towards Walker oh great save but the rebound off the line it comes back out again still a chance Benning attacks it and he's blown wow how on Newport still with
a clean sheet in this game. Some sensational defending, but Mansfield surely had to score there. Outrageous. That is absolutely amazing, the fact that the ball hasn't found the back of the net. Talk about last-ditch defending. White shirts throwing themselves in front of the ball to deny two or three Mansfield shots in quick succession. Fantastic stuff. Here comes Nicky Jose, and coming off is Danny Rose. What have you made of his contribution to the game? Yeah, he's been on the periphery, really, Danny Rose. He's worked hard for the team. He's had a one-half chance through with a flick header. He's popular here, getting a great reception. But I did feel that Flickcroft might want to make this change a little bit sooner. He hasn't did. really looked like scoring, has he, Danny Rose? And it's going to be a change here for Newport in, a, in the second by the looks of things. They've pulled Keeney Marsh Brown back. Here comes Nikia Jose into the action. And comes on here for a corner. Benning is going to take this one. It'll be an outswinger from the left. Here it comes now. Last few seconds of the first half of extra time. In towards the near post. Back out to Benning again. Inside the penalty area. Low ball cut back towards the edge of the box. It comes through to McDonald who strikes it. And that one was heading towards the top corner. A great defensive header away at the back there. I think possibly by uh, Dimitri. Was yeah, it was possibly? Dimitri. Yeah, he didn't blink though. That was an absolute fizzer, wasn't it? He just headed it away as if like it was just a looping ball aimed at him. Amazing. Real, real tough guy, Dimitri. Those clearances off the line now, just waiting for the net to bulge. We had to score, it was, it, but the defending was spectacularly brave, wasn't it? We had one minute extra. Yeah, and we've played that minute already, so this throw in here on the right-hand side, the long one from McDonald, he's suddenly got a long throw. In it comes from him towards the near post, cleared away, the referee's going to blow his whistle, and that is the end of an exhausting first half of extra time. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh, and it's still connected. Mansfield nil, Newport nil. 15 minutes to go before we potentially reach penalties and now is the referee going to make them change straight around I'm not sure he is you know I think he's going to give them a few seconds to go in and get some drinks on board and any energy supplements they may want yeah, it's been an enough. absorbing game so far it really has I think that's the right turn of phrase really absolutely absorbing second half particularly extra time as well it started off quite tentatively but Mansfield Town just slung everything at it towards the end there I mean they had to score I think Joe Day pulled off a great save then there were two amazing blocks in quick succession from players on the goal line it's a miracle really that, that they didn't concede their Newport but they go again they live to fight another day 15 more minutes can we find a winner but based on what we saw in extra time there you sense that the pendulum has swung Mansfield's way now it has been swinging backwards and forwards throughout this tie hasn't it it has been great and there's still 15 minutes to go before we reach a potential penalty shootout. A roar from both sets of supporters as the teams turn around for the final time here at the One Call Stadium. A place in the League Two playoff final at stake here this evening. Which side will be heading off to Wembley? Which we'll find out, you'd imagine, in the next half an hour or so. So, uh, given some of the finishing we've seen and some of the chances you wouldn't be surprised if it's an extended penalty shootout <laughs> as well yeah no is anybody going to score you never had a nil-nil shootout I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be still going if it was a nil-nil shootout just, it, I guess it, it anyone just tuning in might, might be excused for thinking this has been a boring game where there's been ch chances have been few and far between we've had enough chances in this match for what, six or seven matches it's been thrilling at times and it's quite ridiculous I have to say that nobody has scored but on we go play continues we are back underway again and we have played 10 seconds of the second half of extra time and it is still nil nil it's a free kick early on here which has been won by the away side and a free kick will be taken by Joe Day in this game we've had 39 shots just nine on target just six for Mansfield three for Newport we've had 14 corners it's had just shots. about everything and, and on apart that, from a goal it's 20 to 19 isn't it yeah. in, in Mansfield's favour so look it, it, it's been fairly they've certainly evened things up from half time onwards the home side here comes a Dimitri long throw from the left hand side the shuffles to the left of one of the pitch side microphones here 
Dimitri launches a long throw in now into the penalty area it goes another good throw in there Mansfield able to get it away Sheehan puts it back in and Logan dives away to his left hand side but in the end has the composure to move his body out of the way of the ball so he doesn't concede the corner goal kick it is to Mansfield Town that's another shot that's 20 apiece that's a lovely effort it really is from, from Joe Sheehan Josh Sheehan rather on the volley I think that's the third volley he's hit towards goal tonight and it was just looping wasn't it towards that bottom corner I think just to get a foot or so wide in the end after what uh, David Fitcroft said about the referee in the first game have you been happy enough with Michael Salisbury's performance here tonight I have yeah oh, it was a bouncing ball Logan hasn't come yet but he has now using all his experience there it looks as though Aziz was the favourite to get there but Logan got there first and managed to grab it out of the sky yeah. now Mantua will come forward sorry come back to you in a second there Adrian it's uh, the home side have the ball on the halfway line three on the right hand side is Jones he picks up the ball now Atkinson going past him Mansfield will hang on to the ball Jones wide right wants someone to show plays it in field now oh it was a good piece of play as well by Nicky Jose who uh, came to the ball then just moved his body away but then gave the ball away Mansfield coming back again though they have it around 40 yards from goal it's not really space for the shot yet work wide towards Jones right corner of the penalty area for Mansfield Newport with so many defenders back there Jones trying to flight the ball in but Day behind it and he grabs it easily yeah disappointing final ball there from Gethin Jones the right wing back got on the outside quite nicely but it's a scuffed cross straight into the goalie's arms yeah just going back to the referee Michael Salisbury done under pressure at the first 15-20 minutes all Mansfield's players wanted to do was moan at him and getting his ear but he was strong wasn't he he made a, f a few early cautions and I think it just that kind of strong refereeing set the tone and it's almost as if the players have thought hang on this guy's we can't mess around with this fella he'll put our names in the book so that they've settled down and basically just got on with the game and what a good game it's been even though we're still waiting for that first goal yeah they have had six bookings Newport which I think I'm right in saying will result in a, a fine but they won't care about that if it's six bookings which help them through this game and en route to promotion to League One there's a change coming up here for Newport very shortly Pierce watching this ball out of play he's been a steady influence at the back for Mansfield tonight yeah he's been uh, a real leader for the team this evening and throughout the whole season Christian Pierce. I wonder whether Flickcroft uh, might get into trouble for his comments I mean if you said the kind of things he did about the referee for after that first leg in the Premier League you yeah, yeah, would probably get hauled in front of the committee oh, he got away with that one Pick on Mansfield CJ Hamilton wants it on the left he's pulled wide he's got the ball can he come up with something better than his last attempt driving into the penalty area now trying to come inside he's gone off Wilmot and the Stags have themselves a corner and another big roar from the home fans yeah can they suck the ball into the net this time behind that goal away to our right good defending 1v1 front Robbie Wilmot but he could do nothing to prevent the corner an outswinger coming from Benning on the left hand side we played 4 minutes 20 of the second period of extra time away from goal it goes nothing on towards goal no oh it's just past the post and another chance goes begging I'm just trying to see who it is getting up from his feet down there I think so who is it Walker. Tyler Walker again two great chances for him I'm just expecting it to go in the net and every time it goes wide it's an incredible miss Tyler Walker has been burying those chances for fun all season long 22 league goals and he should have had two tonight that far post header he's on his own it's instinctive yes but you're really surprised he hasn't hit the target uh, Dolan Matt Dolan coming on here for Josh Sheehan who's put in a great performance tonight Dolan the player dropped out of the side ahead of this one and Harry McCurdy is going to come on as well and he is going to replace uh, Aziz so the substitute is substituted yeah, he's limping Aziz he's, he's got a problem and he's really disappointed I think that's a shame for, for Newport because he's, he's looked okay Aziz but so McCurdy comes on very much in the uh, Jack Grealish mould in terms of the uh, way he sets himself up socks almost around his ankles of course comes from the same school as Jack Grealish having come through the ranks at Aston Villa and McCurdy comes on now to play upside, uh, sorry, up top alongside Jamil Matt. 
Mansfield coming forward down the right hand side Jones lays it down the right wing and trying to avoid the challenge there is Nicky Jose and although there was no contact from Mickey Dimitri it was enough to put the Jose off balance and that's why the referee's given the free kick yeah he's fuming Dimitri because he knows that Nicky Jose was going to knock that ball out of play it shifted it out of his right foot and it was it was rolling out for a throw in yes he committed himself but he felt that that should have been a throw this is a good chance for Mansfield left footed Bennings deliveries have been out pretty good haven't they by and large he's got a great left foot on him and he's just going to try and drop this in the area here it's wide on the right hand side in line with the edge of the penalty area a couple of yards in from the touch line can he lift this in to try and give Mansfield the lead and it's headed over the bar and uh, the header this time from who was it who's forward now I can't quite see is it Sweeney it was Sweeney yeah number 17 it was a little flick header wasn't it another delicious cross Benning he's got has a been, really good left foot, hasn't he? He's been terrific. I think he's been Mansfield's best player. Come on at half-time, and, yeah, not just his deliveries from dead balls, but, but in general plays, he's, he's looked immaculate at the left-back. He's quick, he can get up and down, athletic, and as you say, he's got a great left foot on him. Goal kick here to Newport. I'm going to need a long lie down after this one, no matter <laughs> what happens in the final minutes. We have got eight minutes left of extra time. Lifted forward by... Newport picked up by McDonald though deep in his own half he gets the ball into the right oh it's been missed there by Dimitri and I was saying mistakes at this time can be costly tired minds and luckily for him there he goes all the way through to his goalkeeper we're getting to that stage now are we seven and a half minutes into the second period of extra time so halfway through if there is a mistake by a defender it could be the fatal mistake couldn't it so Nerves will be fraying, there'll be an edginess about the players. No one wants to be that guy, that one that switches off, that one that, that lets his man go. Do you think at this point then no one wants to play that potentially, da not dangerous ball, but I mean everyone's going safety first at this point because you don't want to be that guy? Often we see that, but at the same time, no one wants the pens either, do they? They, they, they want to decide things. I, I think we'll see... Uh, both teams throwing everything at it last few minutes but but defenders are certainly on edge Mansfield attacking down the right hand side where they've gone so many times in this game and Jones really finding all his energy reserves here to go forward but in the end he has been stopped it's cleared away by Newport but McDonald picks it up again down the right and it's high ball in over the barn behind for a goal kick yeah disappointing from McDonald who thinks cramping up he has been bright and busy got better and better as the game's come on Alex McDonough former Burnley player of course but yeah this is impossible to call this game both teams could have scored four or five goals apiece temperature dropping quite a lot now only a few of the Mansfield fans away to our right still struggling with the sun in their eyes floodlights on full blast the away team well, the away fan coach is starting to park up behind the away end as well ready for the away fans to leave but there is still time to go yet and we could be a long time away from finding our winner because of a possible penalty shootout foul here on halfway going over this time is a Jose right on the centre spot and the referee on it in a flash free kick to Mansfield and it's been taken short on the halfway line to a Jose on loan from Charlton picks it up plays it forward to the right hand side to Jones he plays it infield it's taken on by McDonald, who's looking long. He drives a long diagonal out to the left wing. Well headed away by Wilmot back there. And then two players almost go head to head there with the ball stuck in between them. Amund and the uh, defender Sweeney. Oh, uh, unconvincing clearance here by Turner. He's got to meet the ball now. Turner nods it away here for Mansfield. McCurdy thought he was being blocked off a bit there. Mansfield clear it away into Newport territory. Five minutes to go, 115 on the clock. And it's been put straight out of play here by Dan Butler. It's a throw in to Mansfield on the right hand side in their own half. It's been taken short by Jones to Pierce. Walks it down the line into Walker, holds it up, waits, brings Jones back into play on the halfway line. On the right hand side here for Mansfield. They're the ones with the momentum at the moment, aren't they? If anyone's going to go and get a goal, you'd say it's probably them, the way the game's been going in extra time. Yeah, they look the fresher side. Jose's given them a, a new lease of life, and 
Newport do look tired. Benning rolls it down the line. CJ Hamilton still going. He's in the box. CJ Hamilton cuts it back. And it's cleared away by the Exiles' defence. Tense times here at the One Call Stadium in this League 2 playoff semi final second leg. It is still nil nil. We have played 115 minutes. CJ Hamilton inside the box drives in the shot. It's blocked this time by Mark O'Brien. It's been so good, Mark O'Brien, that the Newport defenders have been colossal, really, blocking everything. McCurdy bounced off the ball on halfway, but the referee sees it in his favour. Free kick to Newport County. And surely now any goal is going to be a winner. Y yeah, you'd think so. I mean, it'd be crazy, wouldn't it, if someone were to score and then it was equalised immediately. I haven't gone this long waiting for the breakthrough. Yeah. Mansfield last at Wembley in 2011 for the FA Trophy final, losing 1-0 to Darlington. Hoping to head there again eight years on. High ball forward here for Newport. They've got a man over at the far post. It's Porto Gammond. He can't head to the cross goal. Lays it back to the left-hand side. Lifted into the box again towards the far post. And a great defensive header away. It's your man Benning there who gets it clear. Oh, brilliant, wasn't it, from Mal Benning. Needed to make that challenge. It was a lovely ball into the far stick. But kept his eye on it, Benning. Porto Gammond onside, inside the penalty area force wide now by Pierce rolls it back up the line to Butler he curls the ball into the box well headed out by Mansfield Town although he's not away yet McCurdy trying to hook it on Pierce hacks it into the air the goalkeeper Conrad Logan comes punches it away the referee doesn't give him a free kick and Mansfield will play it away now through bending up the line oh, journalist oh. alongside me pops out his cheeks it's been that kind of night and Mansfield are coming forward they're trying to grab the late winner out to the right hand side it goes and Jones is off again running at this Newport County defence towards the edge of the penalty area a Jose takes it on still a Jose Jones wants it back again down the right he gets it corner of the penalty area here for Mansfield Town we've played nearly 13 minutes of the second period of extra time and his cross is blocked and Newport able to play it away towards Matt on the halfway line but Pierce does enough and Turner will turn it back to Conrad Logan <laughs> so, so much edginess down there that both sets of players are exhausted understandably but yeah the moment or two ago the Mansfield defenders look really rocky Ball down the line to Walker. Oh, he's been hit off Walker. Tyler Walker inside the penalty. It goes over. Big call for the referee. And he says no penalty. Well, we're talking about referees and big calls. They don't get much bigger than that at this stage of the season. Newport now coming forward down the left. Butler clips a high ball down the line. Pierce with the header away. It breaks for Jamil Matt on the left wing. Matt gets his way past Jones. Matt goes over. Free kick Newport. And we have got 90 seconds left of this football match. Oh, wow. Both ends. Action. Tyler Walker really got his way past Dimitri. I didn't think it was a penalty, but he was bundled over. Or at least he was claiming he was. And now at the other end of the pitch, Matt has done brilliantly to force a free kick there. It's not pretty play from him, but he draws the foul from Gethin Jones. And, well, Wilmot, right-footed, in-swinger. This is what Newport, they do, in, they do this day in, day out. They score from so many of these situations, but how they wish they could score from this. We are in the 120th minute here at the One Call Stadium. In comes the free kick, and it's headed over the bar, and that may well be that. It was Wilmot's delivery, but nodded over the top there by the defender who was forward, Dimitriou. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I hope we're handing back to the studio at full time, because I need to go and get a drink of something. Wow, well, yeah, it's, it's been exhausting for us, but think how tiring it must be for the players at the end of a long, hard season. The mental strain as well is immense. We've been a credit to the division, slugged it out big time. From half time onwards, this has been a proper football match. First half was all Newport, since then, very, very even. Mansfield are going to make another change here. You have allowed an additional switch in extra time. And coming off here is Jones, and they're sending on George Grant in his place, who is on loan from Nottingham Forest. He's uh, fourth loan away from the city ground. He joined in January, and he comes on here with one minute to go. So presumably he's been put on to take a penalty. Yeah, he's a good finisher, George Grant. He's been known down the years, especially the last couple of seasons, for, for scoring plenty of goals um, on his loan spells. We are into added time at the end of extra time, at the end of a pulsating second leg in his playoff semi-final. High ball forward here for Newport. Some... I'm oh, sorry, with the seconds left, someone now can make themselves a hero. 
to take their side to Wembley for an unforgettable day out in the quest for League One football. Turner telling his players to go long. He lifts the ball into the left channel, but it'll come to nothing. Out of play it goes for a Newport throw. There are 15 seconds left. What's coming up? Well, what is coming up is a penalty shootout, and it's it seems so harsh, doesn't it, that it comes down to that, but that is, that is the only way we can separate these two sides. A full-time whistle goes from the referee. The team to go through to the League 2 playoff final at Wembley a week on Saturday will be decided by penalties. Both sides have given their all in this game. They've been a credit to their teams and their clubs. And now they will have to go to the benches to decide the five takers. Dear, oh dear. Would you want to be in their shoes, Adrian Clark? <laughs> I would volunteer, yeah. I like taking penalties and I think you've got to you've got a man up in these situations you, you, it's your responsibility to deliver for your team I think the forward players in particular midfielders and forwards I always like to see them volunteer but yeah I'd be volunteering but doesn't mean to say I would enjoy it that kind of pressure is a, the kind of pressure you could definitely do without this tie has finished in normal time 1-1 one, one after the first leg 0-0 nil, nil after 90 minutes tonight we had a further 30 minutes of extra time but that also goalless this will be decided by a penalty shootout it is quite extraordinary that that game has finished goal. There's so many chances, 45 shots between the pair of them. But it has. It means that it's finished one apiece on aggregate, nothing to separate them. So it comes down to penalties. They're next live right here on TalkSport 2. What do you do at this point? I, I, personally, I, I don't really buy into the fact that penalties are a lottery. I think it should be a skill that you practice over and over again. Of course, you can't simulate the atmosphere and no, the dynamics around the ground. But I think if you've got a favoured corner or you practice both corners, then it should be a skill that you step up and just nail over and over again. I completely agree. And I would imagine that, that both managers have been practicing. I, I always think it's daft. I think it's daft for, for teams not to practice, for managers not to just take a little bit of time at the end of training, particularly when you're involved in a playoff scenario, to, to go through it and to give everyone the opportunity to, to get some valuable practice. So, so now I would imagine they, they will know the five. I would certainly hope so. The players just down there at the moment, the two managers have a big decision now to pick the penalty takers. The two captains back out there with the referee and the penalty is going to be taken at the Newport end of the ground by the looks of things. Yeah, well, which is uh, quite important. It could be for Newport County. Big advantage. And that's the, the first blow that has been struck by the Exiles. David Pipe going to rev up the fans again. He's been almost chief cheerleader <laughs> for the has, side tonight playing his part 35 years old now and you need those characters in your dressing room especially at times like this yeah you do I just wonder how much research has been done and whether they had the time to to look back at the history of all the potential penalty takers each respective manager I was speaking to Martin Margerson a friend of mine who's the England goalkeeping coach telling me about the, the research the analysis that went into the World Cup planning and, and it was just incredible he said that penalty shoot that victory against Colombia was the culmination of 18 months analysis and preparations on the prospect of a penalty shootout these two managers haven't had a chance to do that of course they haven't but I'm sure that they will have a plan a huddle now for Newport County down on the pitch final words of encouragement final instructions Mansfield already back out there, taking their places in the centre circle. All the subs joined arm in arm on the touchline. Now is the time for focus, the time for calm, the time for composure. But the goalkeepers, you know, they've been the stars to a point in this tie so far. You wouldn't rule them out making a name for themselves well, again. Goalies love shootouts. So you won't hear a keeper complaining about being put in this situation. They have the opportunity to be the hero, don't they? And, and I have to say, throughout the season and during this, this tie, both Conrad Logan and Mansfield and Joe Day of Newport have been brilliant. They have been first class and I'm pretty confident that one of them might just be the difference here as well. A handshake between the two goalkeepers who walk forward slowly with the referee towards the end of the ground where the Newport County fans are. Loads of them have left their seats now and taken their place right behind the goal net. 
the police lined up there as well the photographers trying to get themselves in position and the first taker in this penalty shootout is going to be for Newport County it's going to be Dan Butler yeah it's always good to put your strongest penalty takers up at the top of the order in my opinion left footed Dan Butler what's he got Butler up against Conrad Logan who throws his arms out and says come on then what you got Butler stepping forward here left footed strides up to the ball and strokes it into the corner 1-0 to Newport County sends him the wrong way Logan drives to his right and Butler goes to his right it's a really confident left footed penalty low hard into the corner first up for Mansfield is Nicky Ajose on as a substitute in this game now has to score from the penalty spot and in classic fan fashion the fans waving their arms in the air backwards and forwards do you think that does anything to a player or do you think you can block it out well you should try and block it out but it, it might affect some I think it's uh, an exercise if you're a fan that's what we're doing a Jose takes four or five steps back from the ball a couple to the left hand side Looking to try and make it 1-1 here for the home side. Jose steps up and drills it to the left-hand side. The goalkeeper going the wrong way. It's 1-1 in the shootout. Goes for power. Nicky Jose. That was confidently struck. Didn't mess around with that at all. Low and hard. Podrick Ammon. Now for Newport. He did score a penalty in the normal season. Of course, missed his penalty in the first leg before knocking in the rebound. What will be the outcome this time? Ammon steps up. Oh, he's into the corner. Conrad Logan went the right way and loads of people around us. I thought that one was going to be pushed around the post. And Logan puts his fist in his mouth and crunches his hand in frustration. Got his hand to it, didn't he? The goalkeeper, Conrad Logan. And I didn't fancy Ammon there because he rushed to, to sprint to take the penalty. He was in a real hurry to get it over and done with. But he got away with it now for the home side it is going to be C.J. Hamilton left footed this one referee not happy yet because the TV cameras are too close to the players on the halfway line which is something I've never seen before so not the ideal camera for has Hamilton. to retreat yeah it's put him off hasn't it Hamilton steps up with this penalty for Mansfield and drives it straight down the centre. 2-2 two -two in the shootout. Nothing to separate these sides still. Yeah, good pin. It's a safe option going down the middle. But what he did, he put some elevation on it. And it took it above the goalkeeper's trailing legs. So, so far so good for both teams. Two apiece. Now we move on to Mickey Dimitriou. The man who we've talked about so often in this game was the thrower of uh, the ginormous long throws now he has to take a penalty he scored two penalties this season and he steps up here and rolls it into the corner again Logan going the wrong way and everyone has scored so far Newport County lead 3-2 that's not a centre half's penalty that's, that's so composed it really is often you see the defenders go for power just put their laces through that was cool as you like from Dimitri, left footed, just rolls it into the bottom corner. Now it's going to be Tyler Walker. He's also scored three penalties this season. Last of those coming in the win at Exeter back at the end of March. He's going to step up to this one right footed in front of the Newport fans. Can Walker deliver? Up he steps now, slows up his run up and he's saved! It's saved! And Newport have the advantage in the shootout. Diving away to his right hand side, Joe Day. And the Welsh side so, so close now. Would you believe it? Tyler Walker, the hero of this Mansfield side, the talisman, the top scorer, should have scored two guilt edge chances in the game. He's only going to miss the penalty. Unbelievable. Great save, though, from Day. Sensational. Newport here with a chance to make it 4 2. And they do so. It's rolled into the corner by Regan Paul. That's calm, isn't it? 20 years of age. That was a really just a calm penalty. Pressure was on. And wow, talk about pressure now. Substitute Mal Benning. Been singing his praises. He's got a gilded left foot. Benning has to score. There is no margin for error now. Newport with four goals from four penalties. 
Walker missing his for Mansfield a moment ago. Benning has to put this in, otherwise Newport are off to Wembley. Here he comes. Oh, it's in! Oh, he's hit both posts and gone in. Well, dear, oh dear, oh dear. He hit it to the goalkeeper's left. The goalkeeper went the right way. It hit one post, rolled across the line. It looked as though it was going to bounce out off the other post, but in it goes. <laughs> Incredible. Absolutely amazing off both posts. He must have thought he missed it. Wow. And now a chance for Matt Dolan. This is it. A man who's won the playoffs in the past in League One, now trying to fire his side to Wembley in this League Two semi final. Yeah, Logan doing all he can to put him off, coming out to meet him, telling the ref is not on the spot. Dolan stepping up to this one left footed. Logan has to save or Dolan has to miss. Dolan steps up into the corner. Newport County are going to Wembley. This game has gone all the way. It's heartbreak for Mansfield Town. But those away fans are going absolutely crackers behind the goal. All of the players, all of the backroom staff sprint towards them. It's an incredible ending to a quite remarkable game of football. Newport County winners 5-3 on penalties. Dolan with the crucial kick. And they will play either Tranmere Rovers or Forest Green Rovers in the League 2 playoff final. Congratulations to Michael Flynn and co. Their remarkable story this season continues. Their rise, they were well out of the playoff situation. And now they are just one game away from League 1 football. Mansfield Town, the players... Some of them walk off down back to the dressing room. Some of them sink to their knees inside the centre circle. So close to automatic promotion on the final day. They lost that game against MK Dons and haven't come up with enough to beat Newport County in two legs of this playoff semi-final. And ultimately they go out in the cruelest way possible by penalties. Yeah, it is heartbreaking for the home side Mansfield. It really is. They had a cup final, didn't they, on the final day of the season beat MK Dons and you're up and they didn't they lost and then they've, they've lost by the cruelest of ways haven't they in this penalty shootout they didn't show up in the first half here tonight but from, from the half time onwards they've been excellent and you've got to feel for them you really have but Newport are the cup specialists they love these situations and when it mattered most they held their nerve the penalties were exemplary from the exiles and I wish them the best of luck at Wembley well, they were at Wembley last season when they played Tottenham in a replay in that FA Cup game in front of nearly 39,000 people. Not quite sure what the crowd will be this time. It'll probably depend on whether they play Tranmere or Forest Green. But they will be back at the National Stadium as they try and get themselves up to League One. It finishes here 1-1 on aggregate. Newport County the winners, 5-3 on penalties.